Good morning and welcome everyone. We'll start the session this morning with the work session with our county engineer, Anthony Bargett. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I believe all three board members were at the last RPA meeting. I, I think I saw all three of you in attendance there. Is that correct? Um, where, where we talked about the RCTP discussion and, and uh, made a motion to make some changes with that program. And were you there as well? I believe so. They were, okay. Um, so I just wanted to uh, summarize um, kind of where we're headed with the RCTP uh, program. And then also we have Chandra Ravada with ECIA here to, to chime in on anything extra. So I'm gonna read out an email that, um, that, that kind of the Chandra sent out to the engineers and I just want to summarize this. So the RPA board approved 13.74% of the STBG funding to the small cities. So we increased it from 10% formally to now 13.74%. Um, also during that same meeting at the RPA, um, $250,000 was approved to the city of Grand Mound for uh, their Y54 East Streets, leave, leaving uh, 266,000 for RCTP program for federal fiscal years 24, 25, and 26. So then what this means is um, each county can get around $22,200 for the next three years from the STBG program in reimbursements. Um, so as it states, you know, we, we've been doing a one-to-one -one match. We've been uh, sending out $75,000 to the small cities and receiving 75,000 back um, in STBG funds. Going forward in these three fiscal years, it's gonna be $22,200. Um, so a pretty good reduction from what we've, you know, we've been planning. Um, you know, certainly Chandra can, can uh, chime in and give a little more detail to that. But I wanted to, uh, to bring that to your attention. Um, I believe my Delaware board is looking at possibly uh, increasing uh, from their own local fund um, up to the 75. That hasn't been decided yet. There's just been some discussion on that. Um, that does not mean we would receive re reimbursement for the STBG. We'd still be short on that, but they're looking at uh, trying to fully fund um, their program over there. So just wanted to throw this out to you for general discussion. Um, and if you have any comments, you know, based on what you've heard here. You say the funding number is going up, increasing or decreasing? I would like the volume up some. This is not a meeting I attended. The RCTP uh, reimbursement to the county is going is decreasing, going down. Um, so th that automatically means that uh, if we're on a one-to-one -one ratio, we're only allowed twenty-two thousand two hundred dollars per fiscal year to all the small cities where we've been allowing seventy-five thousand dollars. So it's decreasing. Our colleagues to uh, Delaware County and Jackson County both spoke about keeping the program viable and avoiding reduction, but then voted voted in a compromise to reduce it. So um, I was against it. I thought we should keep the funding for the small towns, and I still believe that. So I would be in support of figuring out ways to do it. I was unfortunate that uh, uh, we weren't able to accomplish that. Well, the, the difficult thing with this is that um, as we increase the percentage, uh, there was a couple of the scenarios that were presented. One was 15% uh, and I think 17%. And um, yes, that increases the, the funding for the small cities, but it pulls away the funding from the counties and, and uh, cities over 5,000 population. So the increased funding that we're seeing through the infrastructure bill um, is just being decreased by this program. Um, so we're, you know, we're already pull them back from our increased funds from this, uh, from the infrastructure bill. As we go along in the future years, I'd really like to see you highlight at some time where the infrastructure bill has helped us with roads. I mean, it would be nice if you could do that shout out when that happens, where you could say, and this increase is because of the infrastructure bill, because I just don't, I don't, I am not aware that that's helping at all at this point. I, it's I think just it's missing us. Yeah. Well, right now it's <clears throat> the funding hasn't even come through yet, you know, um, so it's it's coming into the next year. Um, I think it's going to be minimal at best, you know, because we have the match requirements. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing about a 10 percent increase, but that's kind of being reduced a little bit from these programs like this. 
Um, then you take inflation into it. I mean, everything's up quite a bit. I'm about to discuss the, you know, the projects list here and, you know, we're quite a bit over budget on that. Um, so it's minimal at best is, you know, what we're seeing for, for the benefit of the infrastructure bill. Well, hopefully once they release this infrastructure funding, it will turn around and look a little better, but I'm not real optimistic about it either, but. I'm not either. I mean, cause I mean, we, we've been given the actual percentages we're going to see. Um, now there's the, uh, the various grants out there that, that, that could be, can we, we can go after, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be looking for those things. Um, but they're highly competitive and, you know, they're not direct allocations like we're, like we're used to. Would you like Chandra to, um, discuss anything with this? Chandra, if you want to add to this discussion or? Yeah, I mean, uh, what Anthony said is uh, accurate. Uh, the problem what we had is the funding for county small city programs would have been at 75,000 if we did not fund the Rickardsville project for Iowa 3 where the RPA board gave 250,000. And then uh, if, we had, if the board did not approve the Grand Mound project for 250,000. So when we analyzed the projects in month of February, we assumed that we will get a 25% increase. That's what we heard from the feds. But later on, the feds corrected us saying the 25,000 is for all transportation money combined. So, but the programs which are existing did not get 25% increase. They got smaller percentages of increases. Whereas the new programs like the clean air and uh, sustainability programs, they got 100%, they're brand new programs. So overall, the transportation bill gave 25,000 increase, but the core programs which are existing did not see that. So with that, as we already approved these two projects, that brought down the balance to 260,000. Otherwise, would have been fine where we are, so. Thank you, Chandra. Anyone have anything for Chandra? Uh, just uh, one more quick update to the board. The 260,000 what we have is the next fiscal, three fiscal years. After that, the program will be back to where it is. So then we'll be reimbursing one-to-one -to, -one to the counties to run with the program. But these three years is where the deficit is because of the two projects we approved at the RPA board, so. Did, did we make any, uh, Shonda, this is Jay Wickham. Did we make any decisions uh, related to how the program would be funded uh, and or applications received with the decrease in funding. So we're gonna just do two or three projects or is that a county by county decision? So we left that to the counties. Uh, each county can decide how they want to uh, do the program. Uh, where we heard from all four county supervisors that this is a very, very good program. All the small cities are getting benefited. They see the value, but they also see that city like cities like Rickardsville and Grand Mound which are population 110,000 or so, or 10 people or so, getting 250,000 is close to nothing for them. So they really see that those cities should get some kind of funding because they have projects that are going on right now. Uh, so it's more like uh, there's a no right answer here. Both sides are good with it. Uh, so then we left to each county engineer and the supervisors to decide how they want to run with the program, so. Okay, thank you. Do, have you resolved that, Anthony, yourself, how we should handle our reduction in funding or? Well, as far as like the number of uh, applicants. Yeah, so we, should we reduce it or, you know, say, hey, the max project is smaller. So you're either going to do smaller projects or fewer projects. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a hard question to answer because, you know, um, the, the, the small cities projects are going increasing in cost too. Um, you know, usually they, they try to look at like a little silk coat project or maybe like a overlay that they're trying to match funds with. Um, you know, if we do like five, $5,000 projects, it doesn't really get you very far. Um, that feeling says that we should maybe narrow it down to maybe two. Just an idea. Two projects, but larger. Is that what you're suggesting? So Maybe half and half, or maybe one that's like, say, you know, 15,000, the other one is 7,000. You know, it's, 
I guess you'd have to uh, take a look at the list of projects that have come into and and uh, you know what what the uh, sort of the importance of each project is. One might score just way better than everybody else, and it may be that we just award that one project. It's going to be difficult. There's no doubt about that. It's uh, you can't get much done for fifteen thousand. No, you know, it's just even we're rewarding you know twenty five thousand dollar grants. I mean, yeah, they they. They love the program, but that doesn't even take you very far these days either. I, I recall a, a, um, a memo from Ed, I think, indicating that as part of our purchase of services program, some of the small communities are asking for other things. The mayor's meeting had some discussion about the shortfalls of even the program, you know, we're talking about today because of rising costs and their needs. So, um, Maybe we see what's in the purchase of services to see if that tells us any more about what they're actually applying for purchase of services for before we make a final decision today. Didn't that didn't that end last week, the deadline to apply? It's today. this week. Yeah. It's today. So that might help us if that's there, at least it's a so the, the, um, I think it's fair to note that the current round of RCTV applications coming in um, will not be impacted by this. Um, so for this year's projects, they're fully funded. It's next year's that, you know, we'll start seeing this reduction. Next couple of years. Yeah. Three years. Three years. Yeah. So we have a, about a year to kind of think through this process, um, think about how many applications we'd want to approve. Any extra funding that we might want to throw at this, you know, we just we've got a little bit of time to think about this. To keep us informed on what Delaware County does, I guess I would entertain uh, thoughts of us funding it somewhat to bring it up to that previous level that the small cities can some of their projects completed. Yeah, and, and we've got time again, you know, we can look at it into, for the next budget. It's not something you have to mend into the current year's budget. Um, so you've got a little bit of time to think about this. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chandra. Thank you, Chandra. Okay, well, from one set of good news to another, you want to go to the number two here? Go ahead. All right, so we compiled a list of uh, all the projects we've uh, bid out this year. Um, there's one project that I actually I never put into the construction program, but I, I had thought about, um, but looking at how the prices were increasing, I kind of pulled it out. So um, I got kind of keep in mind that I had a four or five mile overlay project that I was going to uh, insert in there as well. But seeing how the the prices were increasing so much, I prioritized that one out of there. Um, <laughs> so the deficit I'm going to talk about is is what's based on these projects, but the deficit would actually have been higher if I had bid that one out as well. So that kind of shows you that I had to actually you know pull out one of our projects to try to stay close to budget this year. So grand total projects, and this is everything. Um, uh, state funding, STPG funding, and local projects. So we have two, two projects in the list there that are either federal aid or, or state funded. We have the Sundown Road Paving Project and we have the John Deere Bill Grant Project. Those are uh, federal or state funds, um, plus all the other local projects. So grand total pro projects comes up to 23,915,000 or 916,000. Um, so the estimate that we had on all those projects was 21,558,000. So our actual bid minus estimates in the whole we are is about $2.3 million. That's all of the projects combined. If you see the, the green highlighted area there, that's all of the, uh, the projects less the FM account projects or the STBG projects. So all of our local projects, the actual um, bids came in at a 16.5 million. And the local, um, our, our budget amount was 15.7 million. So that shows a $771,000 uh, 
deficit that, um, that we'll need to amend up for. Um, again, if I had bid out that other project, it probably would have been closer to about $2 million deficit, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. So um, this kind of shows you, you know, a year ago, we would have been under budget on everything. Everything keeps going up. Yep, and we we put we put uh, you know some um, you know some, some inflationary uh, increases in our bid items, knowing that this stuff was coming, and even that was still exceeded. Um, I I'm hoping things are stabilizing a little bit. I've, the, the last couple of projects we bid out, I expected them to be higher than they were, and they, it looks like they came down a little bit. So maybe that's going to kind of shake out a little bit, but. You know, obviously the big, uh, the big one that's that's the unknown is the oil. You know, any asphalt type project is is just going to be so day to day when it comes to the pricing. So this is free information. Um, you know, we're seven hundred seventy one thousand uh, dollars short on uh, on what we had estimated for this for this year. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about the project that you pulled out? What is the project? Who? What are the roads? Who's it impact? Yeah. It was a, I think it was around a six mile project. I have to think about it. Um, it was around the Bankston area. Um, it was, I think North, let's say North Bankston, um, North, that's the East, West, North, South, East, West. It's kind of a horseshoe road uh, around Bankston that um, I was looking at doing a, just a nice mill and fill overlay just to try to maintain. Um, that was the, kind of one of these beginning projects that I want to kind of get into to try to maintain what we have instead of these major overlays. Uh, so it was going to be probably like an inch and a half mill, um, inch, inch and a half overlay. Um, and I'm, so I'm trying to cycle those types of projects in. So we, every 15 years, we stay on top of those roads. That one had to get pulled out because of, you know, the, the, the price increasing. So that was the first one that had to go. The other ones are all priority. We have to get these done because they're either in poor shape or they're just priority projects we have to take care of. For the 771000 we have that in a budget or so we the... cash flow wise we're okay. okay so we can support it cash flow wise budget wise we'll have to amend it um this is kind of a harbinger for you know coming years um you know if this trend continues next year we're going to be pulling out some projects more projects we'll have um, to. That's... old highways our primary project next year and that one's definitely going to go um there's some other you know, projects that are pieced around that, that might just have to be pulled out if we keep going this trend here. Because um, although our cash flow can support these types of projects this year, no way next year. We'll, we'll have to pull that back quite a bit. So we know that the Iowa Senate is looking at the local option sales tax. And that did not, it doesn't look like it's gonna pass at all this year, but it's, we've been told that it's coming and it's mm -hmm. probably eventually going to happen. In Dubuque County, that extra sales tax goes exclusively to roads. Correct. When you look at the shortfall, is there a way to say how much of that would have been funded had we received, was it a half split of the sales tax? Harley, do you remember? Three-eighths, wasn't so it? So a three-eighths split? Something like that. Did you look at it from that lens just as an example? Yeah, did I throw, throw another sheet it, there? it would cut down substantially on the amount that goes to the road fund for oh, our yeah. county because if the state would have took it over, the money that came back part would have to go to property tax reduction and then whatever mm -hmm. the other portion would go to whatever was designated by the citizens. Right. Well, that doesn't work for us because the whole one cent went into the road use tax which is a property tax reduction because we're not taxing the property owners <clears throat> to build up our road fund. Right. But it, it would definitely hurt the Butte County. This year, um, out of all these projects, about it's about a 50-50 split for local option and secondary road funding. Um, so out of the projects you see there, about half of those are local option funded. I looked at those balances, fund balances, they, they, they vary. So between the two roads and local option sales tax, uh, you're, you're transitioning between a $12 million and a $1.6 million ending balance. Correct. So it's, it's, you've got a big swing, and this 
fiscal year, this construction season. So you have a little play, um, but if you did your plan, you would draw significantly down the funds close to a 1.6 ending fund balance, which would be historically low for us. Yeah. Which yeah. is good. You're putting the money to work. That's yeah. that's the good news. Well, in a million and a half fund balance is, is, is the number I'd like to be at. Um, that's about what I carry in Delaware County. Um, okay. It's it's a good amount to, you know, let's say if you have a major flood event for the year that's um, or some other kind of disaster, um, that's, that's a good amount to draw funds down and not not go below zero. Um, and I do something called, I call, I call it, you have to ride the roller coaster through the year. You know, you have your two major um, uh, property tax revenue increases for the year. And then in between, you have to ride the, the roller coaster down because um, you just have your kind of normal road use tax funding per, per uh, month. So you have to, have to have a certain amount of money to absorb those highs and lows for the year. I think one of the things to you know, focus on both the public and the board and certainly internally in your division is that, you know, even this year, we're going to be doing 38 miles of roads and six structures. Um, that's in addition to the last six years, doing another 25 to 30 miles of road every year, and then another probably 70 structures. Probably, yeah. So, you know, we've been on a really good clip of uh, drawing our fund balances down. And so uh, the reverse would be even more difficult to handle where you had large fund balances and inflation was eating away at those. Mm -hmm. So we put that money to work and uh, it's really a good power, our infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, over the last five years, uh, the money's had good power. It's bought us a lot of uh, projects out there. Yeah. Now, but now we're finally seeing the opposite side of it. It's doesn't have as much of an impact. But we want to keep a healthy fund balance account because when there's no other way to absorb three quarters of a million dollars over budget because of inflationary costs so depending upon how long you know the last five years we didn't have that inflationary trend that appears to be the new normal sadly mm -hmm. so you know that's that's the fine tuning we can't obviously spend it all and put it all to work because we need to have a savings account is what i think well, of it in terms of a day-to-day -day person i just have to have that too you have to put that money to work or increase in inflation will will eat it up so you, you need a sensible balance which the county engineer just mentioned um but uh having high fund balances doesn't all you're doing is collecting taxes and holding those you, you have to put the money to work well yeah and you you get to a certain amount it's public's like okay what are you doing with this money you know you should be putting it to use so yeah you get you start to get up so high you need you need to make sure it's put to use and um you're serving the taxpayers correctly um, you know, in my mind, I know with that, Anthony, completely, you know, the question is really what, what allows you to do projects, not have to pull one off. we got six miles that we pulled off for this year for Bankston area. And that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining. It's a sad thing, but that's where we are with a very aggressive schedule, but we do fiduciary responsibility is to be able to kind of, as you say, ride that roller coaster with enough cushion that you're not coming back to say the department's broke. Correct, right. Because right. that's a message nobody wants to no, hear. No, I, I would never want to bring that to you. Yeah. I don't ever want to say, hey, we need to go to a bank for a loan to carry payroll or whatever like that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's, the that's county is fine, but you know, the roads projects come from their own budget area. Right. You know, in my mind, I've always known kind of what a bridge costs and what what a road is per mile for cost. Um this is throwing it out the window. You know, this has completely changed what I what I forecast in my mind what something costs so going into next year it's it's going to be total adjustments you know i i even next year i have a pretty aggressive plan in the five-year construction program and i can almost guarantee you there's gonna be at least one project that's gonna be pulled from it and we may have to at the inflation i mean that's yeah i mean everybody's going through this you, know, you, just, you have to don't want to but we're gonna to have to because yeah. money's not there and we do have to keep some balance right I appreciate that you seem to continually monitor the priorities. What are the road conditions? As you say, this was a maintenance issue to try to get ahead of the curve of significant improvement. So um, I, I, I appreciate that. And I think the taxpayers all do that you stay on, on top of the road conditions so we can change what needs to be addressed in terms of priority setting. Sure. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. 
Did you want to go over my report real quick? Yeah, we have a few minutes here. Let's see. Okay, for projects currently we have going on, um, Old Farley Road, Rockville Road, paving project. Um, the culvert replacement subcontractor Stager is wrapping up work on the crossroad culverts. Um, we are anticipating the asphalt paving beginning in a couple of weeks. And then over on Old Massey Road paving project, um, the culvert replacement subcontractor Chick Fry is working on um, box culvert extensions right now. Uh, they'll also be working on culvert replacements and slope widening through the next few weeks. And then a Sundown Road paving project, uh, standard construction is planning to start work once school gets out for the summer, so sometime early June. And then um, we had a pre-construction meeting with Taylor Construction on the two bridges at North Bankston Road and uh, Hickory Valley Road. Um, plan is to start both of those either in June or July and kind of stagger them so they'd be a couple weeks apart from each other. Um, and that's about it for projects. Um, we do have several contracts that are being approved. Um, the John Deere Bill Grant is, is getting finalized for the contract. Um, we have a couple on for today. Uh, I suspect we'll have some pre-construction meetings very shortly here for those projects in the next week or two. And then <laughs> here comes the floodgates. Things are gonna really open up, I think, pretty quick here. So well, basically once school lets out, things will get flying. Yeah, if anybody has any traveling to do on Northwest Arterial, it's gonna, it's going to be congested because uh, I think the, the contractor is probably going to start there first and they're actually being directed to start right when school gets out um, for the John Deere Bell Grant project. And I, I'm not sure yet how they'll uh, stagger that with our project, if they'll do it at the same time or if they'll try to kind of stagger it differently. Um, we do have a completion date next November 2023. So they have that up until then to get ours done. Um, so they may get some done this year and look into it next year. Just We'll have to wait and see how they stagger that. That's going to significantly change traffic flow. And have we tried to imagine how that would impact our other projects like the old highway road into next construction season next year? Yeah. Um, again, I need to have the pre-construction meeting to see how they're going to be doing this project. If they'll try to get a lot of it done this year, that will tell me about the old highway. Um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how that works out. The uh, Northwest Arterial portion, you had said there's some major reconstruction on some of the intersections, like Correct. Asbury Road intersections. Yep. Definitely be an area that the public wants to avoid when that starts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Imagine that. I mean, I'll probably come over cycle. Highway, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just thinking, trying to imagine what that, this summer too, obviously all those traffic patterns will be different. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all, about all I have today. Do you have anything further, Jay? No. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. What was that?
Sorry. Call the Board of Supervisors into session for the Monday, May 9th, 2022 board meeting. We'll start the meeting with public comments. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which are on the agenda. Go to the podium, state your name and home address. Individuals wishing to comment on a public hearing will be given the opportunity during that respective hearing. Individual remarks are limited to three minutes. Do we have anyone in chambers that wishes to address the board? State your name and address, please. My name is Ron Schweitzer, 13490 Marcella Court, Dubuque, Iowa. I'm addressing the, on the ATV UTV ordinance that we guys are going to talk about today. <clears throat> I think the road routes have gone good this year so far, or the last almost three years, no incidents in that. Uh, I know people have made comments that they'd like to have longer hours, you know, to the trails, you know, where they could do stuff before it gets dark or even after hunting. You know, it kind of messes up your hunt until you got to leave out of your hunting spot for deer hunting earlier before the hunting season's over or time out for that day. <clears throat> uh, we'd like to see maybe go 24 7 on hours. Uh, I know a few people mentioned too that they'd like to see a few more roads opened up, the ones that are kind of landlocked into where they just because where they live at, you know, they can't get onto the roads on there. Uh, other than that, I thank you very much for, for listening to me. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Anyone else, Caprice? My name is Caprice Jones. I reside at 440 Klingenberg Terrace in Dubuque, Iowa. And I'd like to uh, thank the Board of Supervisors, Jay Wilkham, Holly Potoff and Ann McDonough, as well as CJ May, the county attorney in his office and Sheriff Joe Kennedy, the founding youth board and staff and special thanks to Sarah Coble. This thanks is in line with gratitude towards Dubuque County for being in position to be the catalyst of a new day of corrections, offering rehabilitative services to those inmates who desire to want to change their mindsets. So I thank you all. It's the beginning of a new day. Thank you, Caprice. Anyone else in chambers wishing to address the board? <laughs> Do we have anyone on Zoom, Don, that wishes to address the board? None? Okay. Move forward. We have no proclamations for the meeting today. Next to be a approval of Minutes of the meeting of May 2nd. Everyone have a chance to review the minutes. Motion to approve. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of May 2nd meeting. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we move to consent items. We have a class BB beer permit for Epworth Sportsman's Gun Club and a class LC liquor license for Dubuque Driving Range. I will make a motion to approve the consent items. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve the consent items. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Go to procurement procedures. There are no procurements for this meeting. Uh, public hearings, a proof of publication for the public hearing for today. Motion to approve the notice of public or proof of publication. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the proof of publication. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next we'll go to zoning case ZC hash mark 04-13-22 Farber Family Revocable Trust, Allen Marine Farber A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential. Tammy. Good morning, everybody. The applicants are requesting to rezone from A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential 1.95 acres to allow for the construction of a new home to be able to continue to assist in the farming operation. 
This property is located 4.30 miles west of the city of Cascade along Goose Hill Road and is legally described as the Northeast of the Northeast, Section 31, T87 North, R2W, Cascade Township, Dubuque County, Iowa. The property is owned by Faber Family Revocable Trust, all Al and Maureen Faber as trustees. Zoning in the area includes A1 agriculture to the north, south, east, and west. They are requesting to put a, on a home on a 40 acre parcel so that currently has an existing home on it. They are requesting to do this to preserve the crop ground. They will plat off the new home site area and create it its own lot. There are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property. There are no special use permits attached to this property. Five letters were sent to the property owners. Comprehensive plan, chapter nine, agriculture and natural resources, page 134, objective 3.1, and chapter eight housing, page 122, objective 12.7 may apply to this case. And this case was approved uh, six to zero in favor by the zoning board. Is this not working? Sorry. <laughs> Pull it down a little bit, thank you. Okay. So this is the location where they're going to be putting the new home. And um, with the way that we have set up the A2 agreements, they are locking up the balance of this parcel and another parcel of land for non-buildable. So basically there's two homes going to be on an area of 80 acres total, which is what we do all the time. Okay. So the, uh, they're gonna share the driveway then? Yep, they'll share the driveway, they'll share the well. Any questions for Tim? Nope. And any questions? Just comment. I thought the meeting, um, people were asking really good questions at okay. the zoning board meeting. I know you have a change in who's on your board, but I thought that um, I, I really appreciated that sitting out in the Zoom room, so. Thank you. Motion to open the public hearing. I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by aye. Open the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. The <laughs> motion to second to open the public hearing. All in favor signify by aye. 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 My here. Yes, because I didn't hear you. <laughs> Do we have anyone wishing to address the board regarding the rezoning? No one in chambers? Anyone on? Oops. Motion to close public hearing. I will second that. Motion to second to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by aye. 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 A motion to approve the rezoning. I will second that. I have a motion to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by aye. 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 A motion to suspend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. I will second that. I have a motion to second to suspend the requirements. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Motion to uh, motion that the amendment be adopted and that the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate changes on the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspapers as required by law. I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second that the amendment be adopted. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Here is, we'll move forward. Next, we have zoning case hash mark 04-14-22, Clarence and Florence Kenneker Trust, A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential. Tammy. The applicants are requesting rezone from A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential, 1.94 acres to allow for the construction of a new home for their uh, granddaughter so she can continue to assist in the family farming operation. This property is located 0.68 miles southwest of the city of Burkittsville along Route 3 and is legally described as the southwest of the Northeast, Section 26, T90 North, R1W, Concord Township, Dubuque County, Iowa. The property is owned by Kenneker Family Trust. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agricultural to the north, the south, the east, and the west. There are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property. There's no special use permits attached to this property. Nine letters were sent to the property owners and the city of Burkittsville was notified. Comprehensive Plan Chapter 9, Agriculture and Natural Resources, page 134, Objective 3.1, and Chapter 8, Housing, page 122, Objective 12.7 may apply to this case. So this is a case where um, the granddaughter is going to be building up on the property, and eventually the granddaughter is uh, in line to inherit the rest of the farm. So they're up helping the, grand, the, the family farm now, and they just need to get closer to it. Okay. And do you have anything? 
I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. I have a motion to second to open the public hearing. All in favor signify by aye. 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 We are in public hearing. Do we have anyone in chambers wishing to address the board regarding this rezoning? Seeing no one in chambers, do we have anyone online? Uh, yes, this is Dave Schneider, Schneider Land Surveying, 906 First Street North, Farley, Iowa. Uh, I guess I'm uh, here to answer any questions you may have related to this, but uh, Tammy was uh, pretty much uh, correct in stating that uh, Keisha and her brother uh, are ultimately the uh, uh, future owners of this property when it uh, transfers from their grandmother's uh, trust. Uh, her brother currently crops the ground and uh, the only way she can really be there to assist him is if she's closer and uh, her grandmother's also looking for assistance uh, who, who lives on the farm at this point uh, uh, and, you know, it, and does not plan on leaving at this point until they make her, I guess. Um, so yeah, if you have any additional questions, I'd be happy to answer that. Here's, we have no questions. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Any other comments from the public on Zoom? Okay. I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by aye. 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 I will make a motion to approve the rezoning. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Make a motion to spend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. Second. I have a motion and a second to suspend the requirements. All in favor signify by aye. 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 I'll make a motion that the amendment be adopted and the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate changes on the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspapers as required by law. Second. I have a motion and a second uh, that the amendment be adopted. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Carries. Next we'll go to zoning case hash mark 04-15-22 John P. Taylor declaration of trust dated 8-23-2013 et al. and Barbara A. Declaration of Trust dated 8-23-13-A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential. Tammy. The applicants are requesting rezone from A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential 4.396 acres to allow for a lot line adjustment. This property is located 2.19 miles north of the city of Holy Cross along Hydershite Road and is legally described as lot one of the Northwest and lot two of the Northwest, all in section six, T90 North R1W, Concord Township, Dubuque County, Iowa. This property is owned by John P. Taylor, Declaration of Trust dated 823 of 2013 at all, and Barbara A. Taylor, Declaration of Trust dated 823 of 2013. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agricultural to the south, the east, and the west. The property owners plan to sell this lot to a family member in the future. There are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property and there are no special use permits attached to this property. Six letters were sent to the property owners. Comprehensive Plan Chapter 9, Agriculture and Natural Resources, page 134, Objective 3.1, and Chapter 8, Housing, page 122, Objective 12.7 may apply to this case. This is pretty self-explanatory. And as you can see on the drawing there, they're just trying to, to redo the lot lines and this will be sold to a family member in the future and it will stay in agricultural use. They're just lotting off the building. Yep, they're lotting off the home and the building area. It, it actually has its own lot. They're expanding the lot to get in those structures into it. Motion to open the public hearing. I will second that. I have a motion to second to open public hearing. All in favor signify by aye. 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 We are in public hearing. Do we have anyone in chambers wishing to address the board regarding the rezoning request? Seeing no one in chambers, do we have anyone on Zoom? Don? Uh, yes, this is Dave Schneider again, Schneider Land Surveying, 906 First Street North, Farley, Iowa. Uh, yes, uh, they, uh, Tammy's correct in the fact that uh, there is an existing parcel out there was uh, was uh, created back in the 80s when uh, John and Barb uh, initially bought uh, that farm. Um, and uh, 
basically the only reason that we're doing this or the main reason that we're doing this is because uh, over the years since the 80s they've um they've kind of expanded on their house yard with the windbreak and and that sort of thing on the west side of the property we're basically all we're doing is adjusting the west line of the property 62 feet further west to include all the um, windbreak and driveway that uh, that needs to go with the house when at some point they transfer it to their daughter, uh, which is the intent. And uh, when we come back and plat this, we're also going to be uh, platting along uh, uh, Holy Cross, or excuse me, along Heidershite Road because uh, the intent would be she, her, their daughter would receive everything south of the road. So, but that that'll go through the simple plat process because of the size of the acreage on it. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Motion to close the public hearing. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by aye. 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 The rezoning. I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Motion to suspend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second to suspend the requirements. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Motion that the amendment be adopted and that the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate changes on the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and the portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspaper as required by law. I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second that the amendment be adopted. All in favor signify by aye. 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 That carries. Next, we go to zoning case hash mark 04 16 22, Spring Valley Investments slash Michael Frederick PC Plan Complex to amended PC Plan Complex. Okay. The applicant's request to rezone from PC Plan Complex to amended PC Plan Complex a half an acre to be allowed to build a 50 by 90 storage building for additional storage for the mobile home park. This property is located 5.11 miles southeast of the city of Dubuque along Route 52 South and is legally described as Lot 2 Spring Valley Edition Number 2 and Lot 2 of the Northwest of the Northwest, the north and east of Highway 52, Section 26, T88 North R3E, Mill Salem Township, Dubuque County, Iowa. The property is owned by Spring Valley Investments. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agricultural to the south, PC Plan Complex to the north, R1 Rural Residential to the east and to the west. There are two rezoning cases attached to this property on zoning case number 9001 of 78 that was to allow and subdivide and sell residential lots in a private development compatible with the present mobile home park. And on zoning case number 0819 of 17, it was to amend the current PC plan complex to allow for additional addition of mini storage units with indoor and outdoor storage. The storage units have not yet been built. Um, there are no special use permits attached to the property and 95 letters were sent to the property owners. Comprehensive plan chapter 12, land use page 180, objective 9.1 and 9.5 may apply to this case. So as you can see in that drawing up there, he is trying to build a storage unit for all of the equipment that he uses at the park. He was approved before for personal storage units for rental. So that would not be the same and that has not gone away. He has not built them and he has even expressed that he doesn't know if they ever will get built. But this is the reason he has to amend this is because any time when you have a PC and you make a change, he had to come in and ask for this amendment. And this is strictly for storage for the things for the mobile home park. So it has, it has to do with the actual structure of the shed, not necessarily the lines of the zoning. So it is the line, it is, it is the zoning. So he, in this piece of area where he is at, that is part of his PC plan complex that he was approved in 78 for. So that, or in 78, I don't know if Mike owned it at the time, but then there was another amendment that was done and that would have been done in 17. And that was because at the lower part of the park, he was gonna build some storage units. He was approved for it. He's never built those. And in the interim, he's come in and said, you know, I just have too much junk sitting around out here, too many high expensive pieces of equipment that I don't want exposed. And then because he's asking for any kind of a new structure in this, he has to ask for that. 
So any new structure and plan complexes have to correct. come to us? Yes, correct. And, and I will inform you that we are going to be starting as of next week, starting to have conversation with the zoning board to, to look at this PC, uh, you know, uh, plan complex district stuff and start having conversation about, you know, what they want to change, if they need to change things and how they want to address some of the PC things. And again, there's only been a history in the history of the county, 17 PCs. Most of them were done in the 70s and the 80s. I just find it, uh, I'm not sure exactly the word, but uh, we're here discussing just a, a storage shed on private property within the existing zoning. Right. But just because they're adding a new structure, we have to reapprove the zoning. Right. So anytime in the, it's because of the PC. You're not approving. You're approving an amendment to his original plan. Sure. That's what you're looking at. So his original plan did not include this structure. So anybody who would have a PC, if they're going to add a new structure to that and it wasn't part of the new plan or part of their plan when they asked for it, they would have to come back in. Sounds good. So really, because the, the, the plan complex is for um, manufactured housing, right? That's the purpose of it. That's what we see here. And so the new, it, the new request is for a storage building. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. And inside plan complexes should be same, same. Yep. It wasn't there. So it's kind of slow, steady. Yep. It's, I don't think there's going to be any problems, but I think that's kind of the idea that, yep. you know, it's not exactly what was originally described and Sounds like it's going to be a great amenity. Well, and then like, so you'll remember when we did the, the, the nuns, there's several little, at that time, they approved several little housing areas that you approved. When they come in to build those and get the permits for them, they won't be back in front of you. It's only if they're going out of that plan. Sounds good. I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. I have a motion to second to open the public hearing. All in favor, signify by aye. Hi. Hi. We are in public hearing. Do we have anyone in chambers wishing to address the board regarding the rezoning? Seeing no one in chambers, do we have anyone online? On? I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion to second to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Is Mr. Frederick here? It, and that's you, sir. Yes. I, I just wanted to say that I truly appreciate that you haven't started construction. So thank you for pausing enough to come and get this done the correct way. I, I appreciate that. For a motion to approve, or I don't know if we had any other comments. I will make a motion to approve the rezoning. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by aye. 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 I'll make a motion to spend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. Second. I have a motion and a second to suspend the requirements. All in favor signify by aye. 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 I will make a motion that this amendment be adopted and the zoning administrator be directed to any of the appropriate changes on the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspapers as required by law. Second. I have a motion and a second that the amendment be adopted. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Carries. Thank you, Michael. Next, we'll move to approval of plats, a resolution to approve the final plat of Albrecht Farm subdivision. Tammy. Okay. The property is owned by David and Susan Albrecht and is adjacent to the city of Sherrill along Circle Ridge Road with a total of 29.551 acres surveyed. The property is owned A1 Agricultural and R2 Single Family Residential on zoning case number 0309 of 22. The purpose of this plat is for the construction of a new home. The survey creates two lots. Lot one is a total of 28.441 acres surveyed with a home and farm buildings, and it will remain in current ownership and agricultural use. Lot two is a total of 1.110 acres surveyed, and it will be sold for the construction of a new home. 
Lot one will use an existing and a residential entrance off of Circle Ridge Road. And lot two will use an approved residential entrance permit number 22-09 off of Circle Ridge Road. There were no additions or corrections required for this plat. There are no mortgages on the property and all of the signatures are current. This plat's been reviewed by myself as plats officer. I have, has all the required signatures. I respectfully recommend an approval. So this was a rezoning that you had just done. And this is the plat following off to create that acre of land for that single family home. Motion to approve the plat. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the final plat at the Paul Breck Farm subdivision. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Carries. Next, we'll move to the action items. Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. Next, we'll move to the action items. I have a resolution to approve the hiring of deputies, assistants, and clerks. I believe there is just one uh, position on that. I'll make a motion to approve the hiring request. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the hiring of deputies, assistants, and clerks. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the necessary documents with Stagger Construction for the RCB culverts, new single box, HMA resurfacing on Thunder Road, project LOST-23-7331. A motion to approve the resolution. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the necessary documents with Peter Equipment Company for culvert replacements on various roads. Project L dash C two three parentheses one zero one dash seven three dash three one. I will make a motion to approve the resolution for Keter Equipment Company. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the necessary documents with Keter. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the necessary documents with Mathy Construction doing business as River City Paving for the HMA resurfacing and culvert replacements on Flanagan Road and James Road, Project LFM P23 parentheses 05 7X 31. Move approval of the resolution. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to authorize the chair person to sign a professional service agreement with Shive Hattery for HVAC consultation. I believe that was for a total of $13,900. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution for Shive Hattery. Um, second, just with a note, if I might. So I noticed that the contract says if they come and deliver their report in person, it's an extra fee. I just found that odd. They're in Cedar Rapids. I did not see that on there. I mean, I probably pretty standard, but just thought it was noteworthy. So we're going to get a written report. Most consultants charge for travel and expenses right. in the contract. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Maybe one other comment. Oh, sorry. Our local consultants, I brought that up in our work session, so we, we didn't uh, want to express any further, and the board wanted to move forward with Shive Hattery, so I don't know if that's a separate consideration, to President McDonough. Or any second thoughts about Shive Hattery? Or? I think our I think it was pretty clear from the conversation we had last week that Shive Hattery is who we're going to go with. I just found that to be noteworthy. That that's what happens when you when you aren't working with local for them to come and actually present this. I'm imagining even by Zoom, they would want an extra fee. So, okay. uh, Chris isn't here, so I guess I can. I stand with my second of the motion. For the discussion, we have a motion and a second to approve the agreement with Shrive Hattery. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the necessary documents with Tri-City Electric Company for courtroom number three, audio, vi audio video system project. Move approval of the resolution. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the allocation of project funds for the Bell Tower Productions from the county's ARPA LL. SLFRF allocation. 
I'll make a motion to approve the resolution for Bell, Bell Power Productions. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution for Bell Power Bell Tower Productions. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the allocation of project funds for the Dubuque Dream Center from the county ARP funds. Motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second to approve the allocation of funds for Dubuque Dream Center. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the allocation of project funds for the Dubuque County Energy District from the County ARP A funds. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution for the Dubuque County Energy District. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the allocation of funds to Dubuque County Energy District. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the allocation of project funds for the Fountain of Youth from the County's ARP funds. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the allocation of project funds for the Fountain of Youth. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the allocation of project funds for Dubuque Area Labor Harvest from the county's ARP funds. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution for the Dubuque Area Labor Harvest. Second. A motion and a second to approve the allocation of funds to the Dubuque Area Labor Harvest. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the allocation of project funds for Travel Dubuque from the county's ARPA funds. I would recommend tabling this. We have a presentation from Travel Dubuque. Uh, table. Move to table. I'll make a motion to table until our 945 presentation or second that motion. Is that second. what we're yeah. doing? She made the motion. You second. I have a motion to second to table that resolution. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a re re resolution to recommend to the ECR that the Community Foundation of Greater Dubuque Fund 10 contract be amended. Make a motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we go to communications. We have the City of Dubuque resolution to amend and restate the urban renewal plan for the Great Downtown Urban Renewal District version 2022.3. I will make a motion to receive and file. Second. I have a motion and a second to receive and file. Uh, Urban Renewal District version. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a Manure Management Plan, Demer Family Farms, LLC, hash tag 66731. Uh, manure Management Plan for Circle Ridge Holsteins, hash mark 70666. And a third Manure Management Plan from Scott Steffensmeyer, hash mark 712. Six seven. Note there's no changes to any of those. I make a motion to receive and file. I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second to receive and file the manure management plans. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next we go to open vacancies for information only. Next we have personnel requisitions. We have and for a motion to approve the personnel requisition for a full-time clerk for in the health department. This was tabled last week, I believe. I'll make a motion to approve the request. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the personnel requisition for the full-time clerk in the health department. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, a motion to approve the personnel requisition for a permanent full-time assistant county attorney, grade two. That is due to a resignation. Back oh, from, I'll make a motion to approve the personnel requisition. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the permanent full-time assistant county attorney. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a motion to approve the personnel requisition for a permanent full-time park ranger. 
I believe that is also due to uh, resignation. I believe uh, one of the park rangers took a position somewhere else. Motion to approve. I will second that. I have a motion to second to approve the personnel requisition for a permanent full-time park ranger. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a motion to approve the personnel requisition for a temporary full-time trail crew member. That is with the Conservation Commission just filling spots. I'll make a motion to approve the personnel requisition for the crew leader. Second. Just for the crew member. Crew member, excuse me. I have a motion and a second to approve the personnel requisition for the temporary full-time trail crew member. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a motion to approve the personnel requisition for a temporary full-time trail crew leader. Move to approve. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the temporary full-time trail crew leader. All in favor signify by aye. 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 At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which, which are of concern to that person and which are not agenda items. Please go to the podium, state your name and home address. Please be aware that the board is limited in their ability to respond to such in inquiries as Iowa Code prohibits the board from deliberating or acting on items not appearing on the agenda. Individual remarks are limited to three minutes. Do we have anyone in chambers wishing to address the board? Seeing no one in chambers, do we have anyone on Zoom? Just, just a, a point of clarification. I was asked by this by a person attending. Do you plan to allow public comment um, related to uh, UTV uh, and or travel to Buke during those sessions? Uh, probably not on travel to Buke. That's just an ARP application. Okay. Uh, what about related to the, the UTV? I uh, figured on letting comment. Okay. Thank you. What did you decide? Because we're going to set it for public hearing, I thought. Aren't we setting this for public hearing? It wasn't an action item today, but we've seen that. I think on the uh, UTV thing, there was uh, one for 20. So did the chair decide you're going to allow public comment today? Or you're going to I was going to allow some hearing? comment today just to see where, where the majority stood. Okay. Brief comments, nothing. Not a long discussion, just brief comments, to be fair to everyone. We are at the public comments on Zoom or not? There's no I will make motion to recess till 945. Second. I have a motion to second to recess till 945. All in favor signify by aye. 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 We are in recess till 945.
We have 945 call the Board of Supervisors back in the session. Start with our 945 work session uh, with Travel Dubuque, Keith Ray. Morning, Keith. Morning, everybody. Keith Ray. I'm the president and CEO of Travel Dubuque. My address is 30254 Golf Course Road, Dyersville, Iowa. It's an honor to be here this morning. Thank you for this opportunity to present. Um, we've got an incredibly unique uh, generational change uh, activity that's going on uh, on the western side of the county, but it's going to affect the entire uh, county in such a positive way, much since uh, I go back a long time in the industry. I've been involved with tourism for over 35 years now in a variety of different positions. And I get asked a lot in my, in my occupation, what was the uh, thing that really separated Dubuque and Dubuque County in regards to what we do bringing in uh, the industry. And I look back at the port, you know, you can look outside your window here and you can see that transformation. What happened about 20 years ago, really put Dubuque and our entire area on a, not only a regional, but a national and international map. I look at this project that we're gonna be talking about today as the next step. So as you can see, uh, Travel Dubuque, uh, we really hashtag uh, where Iowa started because we feel we are. We're, one of the, we're the first community in the state. We get a little bit of pushback from Keokuk on that, but that's all right. It's, it's, that's friendly fanfare. So next slide, Don, please. There you go. Travel View, this is our mission statement, leading tourism destination promotion and development to enhance and expand the Dubuque area experience. We do this on a daily basis, as you know, um, you know, I've got an amazing staff. We've got very solid uh, uh, partners. A lot of them are here today and throughout the entire county, throughout the entire region to really shape and mold and market Dubuque and Dubuque County as a premier destination, not only in the state of Iowa, but throughout the entire Midwest. And that continues to evolve a significant. Do you want next slide, please? Travel-related expenditure. This is kind of the holy grail for us. So this is the... Uh, this is throughout the entire county. You can see once again, where I referenced early on about the Port of Dubuque, you can see just the amount of uh, money that's uh, spent in the county each year. And then we hit 2020 with COVID and we all know what happened. Everything came to a standstill, but you can see how much, you know, the, how the, the tourism industry is such a huge economic development tool for the entire county and the region. So that's what brings me here today, coming out of COVID and, and such, and how dramatically that affected everyone. You know, probably our industry was decimated the most by it. I talk about this all the time. My staff is probably tired of me saying this. In our industry, you have to have the ability to travel and to gather. During COVID, we couldn't do that. Now we're seeing that rebound significantly. And if, and the next slide, if you would, please, Don. Momentum. You know, that's a key for anything. Any industry, any community has have just an absolutely positive momentum. And last year, what happened at the field? Next slide, please. We've got the field of dreams. When I talked early on about the, uh, about the port and what that did to our area, the field itself has been, as many of you know, the major destination since 1989 for the entire region, the entire county. Estimated over 300,000 visitors were there last year. And I love this quote from the movie, Terrence Mann portrayed by James Earl Jones. People will come and they do, they have. Since 1989, when the first couple drove down the driveway from New York, came to Don Lansing's farm and wanted to just go out on the ball diamond and play catch, it has become a icon, an iconic spot, not only for the United States, but throughout the entire world. I love that picture too. That's a little girl in 2019 when we did uh, the Team of Dreams event at the site. And that's a replica jersey of the Rockford Peaches from a league of their own. And we had the ladies that portrayed some of the, the ball players were there that day. It was great. This gives you an idea when we reference that 300,000 people. This is, gives you an idea of where people are coming from. You can see it's absolutely staggering. Obviously, the Midwest component with Dane County, which Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago, 
Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, all those areas, Omaha, but it's just throughout the entire United States. It is interesting for me being an older gentleman, being involved in this industry a long time. It's always been a, a task for us to be able to track where our guests come from. Now with the cell phones and the ability for people to ping them and such, our analytics, we can really gauge where people are coming from. So you can see it's absolutely significant and such. And this continues to grow every year, but just the amount of people that come in. I, you know, we talk about our proximity a lot also, where we're located, you know, with the major metro areas, with an easy driving distance that helps us significantly. But we continue to evolve as a community, as a county, as a premier destination. And you'll hear me reference that a lot. Obviously, I have already. But John, please. When I talked about momentum, you know, we talked about everything. This game kind of put it and kind of put the cherry on top of the cake. Um, many of us had the opportunity to be there last year or saw it on television. I, what that game did for not only our area, our region, but our state, that was a four hour infomercial on how amazing it is to be living in Dubuque County in, in Iowa. And everything turned out, you couldn't have scripted any better. That sunset, I like to take credit for that if you saw it. <laughs> we, but it was absolutely gorgeous. I've had the opportunity since the game to be on three national webinars with uh, the Major League Baseball and with a gentleman from the Chicago White Sox. And the gentleman from Chicago White Sox has said two, two, two times on the webinars, that, and he's been, he was involved in 2005 when the White Sox won the World Series. He said that was the best environment that they've ever, ever been at. And he said, and we would love to come back. So just taking that, taking that momentum from that game and just, next slide, please. Even with this, I thought uh, Kevin Costner's quote was perfect. Today is a tradition. Who wouldn't want to play here? That really summarizes it. I mean, not only from a professional baseball standpoint, but across the board, I mean, from everyone who wouldn't want to play in that environment with that corn, with that rural atmosphere and such. But you can see the, the amount of people, once again, those uh, analytics that we showcase, you know, it was just, it's amazing the exposure that, that that field, that event and everything gives our entire region. Next slide, please. Just a little bit of a recap once again on that New York Yankee Chicago White Sox game. It was the most, most watched regular season game of any on any network since 2005. Just about 6 million visitors saw that beautiful Dubuque County, that beautiful rural area and such. And then the, the diamond itself, the ball uh, that was constructed around it was named the ballpark of the year, which was quite an honor for Major League Baseball. Next slide. This is uh, as taken from above by drone. This is the Field of Dreams site many of us are very familiar with. Um, I've been blessed to be involved with the site since uh, 1989, since when the first people came down in a variety of different ways, everywhere from organizing the baseball team that still performs out there 30 some years later. I did have hair back in those days, hard to believe, and also managing pretty much every event that has been there on site and also managing the field. And been blessed to be a big part of last year's activities with uh, MLB and really looking forward to this year's. Next slide, please. This is a complex that was, uh, the momentum from the game once again was amazing. And um, we were lucky enough to have an amazing group come in, um, headed by Hall of Famer Frank Thomas, Dan Evans, and uh, their partners, Rick Heidner. And they were able to, um, to take uh, their the controlling interest in the Field of Dreams. They announced this about three weeks ago with the youth complex and uh, the other uh, items that they're gonna be bringing online at the field over the next few years. And just that investment, that $80 million of private investment in what that will do, not only for the field, but our entire region, the amount of people and the recognition and everything that that will bring in. Working with all of that, we saw a real need, next slide please, uh, 
to grow on that, to grow on the momentum, to grow on all the interest that was generated by that game last year at the actual baseball diamond that was created for that. To give you a little bit of an update, so what happens with that is the diamond itself is permanent. The, the baseball diamond, the fencing around it, the lights and such. But Major League Baseball comes in each year like they did in 20 when the game got canceled, but they did in 21. They'll do again in 22, and they build that structure around it. They build the, the stands. They build the uh, concessions, the restrooms, the clubhouses and such. That's all temporary, okay? So when they leave, they tear that all down and such. But we've had significant interest across the board, across the nation, across the world for individuals, teams that want to play at that site. Capturing with us, trying to capture this, all the momentum, and with this unique opportunity we, we feel that we're in right now, we put together a nonprofit organization that's called This Is Iowa Ballpark Incorporated. And we are trying to get the funds together to build a permanent world-class multi-purpose facility there that we would be able to utilize basically when the weather permits, hopefully April through October into November and really become a year round destination for a variety of different uh, organizations from anywhere. And I'll show that later on in the presentation, but this is what we're here for today to make an absolutely generational change on the Western side of the County, a lifetime uh, changing that um, structure that we'll be able to utilize and bring business and quality of life for people throughout the entire region, throughout the entire nation, really throughout the entire world. But you can see this, I'll, I won't read through it, but you can see in regards to the nonprofit, it's gonna be a combination of public and private entities and the governing bodies will have a huge part of that to be able to see the oversight of the construction of the stadium and then the management of the stadium. So next slide, please. Kind of gives, no, there, <laughs> no problem. If, <clears throat> There you go. So this kind of gives you a breakdown is this is Iowa Ballpark Incorporated. And they will own the stadium structure. The nonprofit will. They will lease the ground from Go the Distance Baseball, the, the organization that uh, owns, manages the Field of Dreams, a long-term lease. And then we will work with Go the Distance for them to manage the day-to-day -day operations. But once again, the nonprofit will oversee the facility and such. And so, okay, next slide, please. This gives you a glimpse. This is a rendering of what we're looking to create. And uh, this has, what we're looking to create will be 3000 permanent seats. This has, if you look to the right side, the bleachers down the left field line, that would be if there was a professional base, baseball or could be a concert, could be whatever there, they would, you, whoever the promoter would bring in the additional 5,000 seats. So that's, this shows you a total of 8,000. What we're looking to create is the 3,000 seats with the suites, with the uh, uh, permanent clubhouses and all that, restrooms, concessions, all handicapped, all ADA accessible and such. So as you can see, it's the, the setting is absolutely beautiful and keeping with the, I'll show you on another slide, kind of gives you the whole Iowa feel to it. So next slide, please. I talked about the year round destination. That's incredibly important for us because we want to be able to utilize and the demand is going to be there for individuals, groups, um, meetings to be there on a yearly basis. This is a suite that we're looking to potentially build that you can see it overlooks the entire field, overlooks the field of dreams and the corn and everything. This would be the type of, uh, opportunity, for instance, that if we would have a meeting there in January, and you'd be able to look over that beautiful white landscape and see everything and such. So that's very key for the group that we're been an organization is to make this a year long destination. We feel, if you wanna go to the next slide, please. I love this slide. I reference this as the back of the stadium. My wife says it's the front. Agree to disagree, but this is the Iowa Plaza. And you can see what I referenced early on, keeping with the our agricultural heritage. This does. You can see the corn on top of the stadium, the corn leading into the stadium. 
the slats that are up top are like you would see on an old corn crib out in the country if you're driving down a rural road. I love the plaza in the front. It's got the state of Iowa there to really showcase once again. The, uh, the banners hanging up down the one line would be all the former Major League ball players from Iowa, like Red Favor, like a Mike Boddicker, like various others, to really highlight and showcase this is Iowa. This is when you come there. I don't care if you're from Chicago, New York, if you're from Japan or wherever, you're coming and you're showcasing Dubuque County, you're showcasing Iowa, you're showcasing our rural heritage. I really feel this is what this does. I really feel that's what that game, honestly, when I got involved with the field 33, 34 years ago, it was that pride of where that field was built. I was born and raised half a mile from here, still live there with my wife and my family and such. My family had been there since the 1860s. It was that pride in showcasing where I live to the world. That's why I got involved with that. That's why I've been involved with it for so long. I think this stadium, this ability working with Go The Distance takes that to an even higher level. It showcases our county, our area, across the world. And we can be doing this for 20, 25, 30 years, bringing people in from all over the world to really see what Dubuque County is about, what farming is all about. When they see there, my nephews plant all the corn out there. They have for over 10 years and such. The biggest prop at the Field of Dreams is the corn. It just is. The difference last year, with those, I've, been, I've been doing it forever, the players walking out of that cornfield. I've worked with over 40 some Hall of Famers through my career out there. People like George Brett, people like Lou Brock, people like Reggie Jackson, the awe that they see, that they experience coming. These are the guys, as many of us know, have played on the biggest stages in the world, in the biggest times, and the awe that they have coming out of that corn. That was replicated again last year when that the professional players walked out of that cornfield. We can do this on a yearly basis and just showcase what Dubuque County, what rural, what Dyersville, what the state of Iowa is to millions of people. Next slide, please. Once again, a year round destination. This gives you a little bit of a breakdown in regards to what, and the interest is there. I'm already fielding phone calls. Tyler from my staff's already fielding phone calls. Dan Evans is here from Go The Distance, already fielding significant phone calls in regards to the interest of wanting to play on that diamond and just how we can take that and expand it. Imagine Cascade playing Beckman High School on that diamond or Dubuque Hempstead playing Western Dubuque on that diamond and that experience that those kids are going to have and their families and such or the University of Us hosting a, a, a collegiate baseball conference out there bringing all those people in from around the, the country around the world and such Holding, like I said early on, a meeting there in the winter up in that, that sweet area and the guests looking out over the, the, I think, beautiful landscape that time of the year. But just once again, that opportunity, that unique opportunity that we have right now. So I, I think that's really a key component of this. We're not building this for one event a year. We're building this for multiple, multiple events that people throughout the county, throughout the region, throughout the nation, throughout the world have the opportunity to take advantage of. Next slide, please. The impact, we have done significant, we've worked with, next slide, please. We've worked with sports facility company out of Florida. They're the, one of the top uh, companies in the nation that do these feasibility studies. Just the stadium alone, in direct spending, and this doesn't, this does would not include um, construction and such, is over $10 million a year that's going to be going into our local economy. Next slide, please. Combine, combine with the, what Gold of Distance is looking, that $80 million investment that they're making into our county, our region, combined between those two on a yearly basis in direct spending, you're looking at over $32 million a year in direct spending that will be going into our local economy. Next slide, please. Once again, with the over $80 million in private investment, and then 250 additional jobs that'll be supported throughout the entire region. That's just not on site. 
that's out through the entire region when we'll need more people in restaurants. We'll need all other businesses that would be created or already existing that will help supplement and help every all the activity that's going to be taking place throughout that. Next slide, please. This really does continue to put Dubuque County on a world-class stage. We saw it last year. I'm not coming with a proposal that, you know, this is like, hey, we hope this would happen. We saw it firsthand. We saw it across the board. I know I probably fielded more emails, phone calls, text messages from people that live all over the world that are from Iowa and said, I have never been more proud to be an Iowan than I was from that experience last night. Like I mentioned early on, that put us showcased Iowa, showcased Dubuque County, showcased rural, our, our way of life really on an international scale. We have the ability with this potential project to do that on a yearly, almost on a daily basis. Next slide, please. So let's build a legacy. I mean, that's really what we're here for today. It's a legacy for all of us. You know, we've done an amazing job throughout all this time frame. We've done an amazing job at the Field of Dreams is still there. You have to be honest. How many movie sites 33, 34 years later are still that much of in the public eye? The Field of Dreams is referenced almost on a daily basis. It's a part of our, our American culture. It really is. If you build it, they will come go the distance, ease their pain. You see it all the time. What we're doing with this, what all of us are doing with this is to continue to build that legacy. So I appreciate it very much. Appreciate all the support, not only for you know, this potential project, but throughout what you all do for all of us, not only my industry, but for all of us in the county. It's not an easy job. Appreciate all the time that you put into it and such. And I have now opened up for questions from the from the board. Thank you, Keith. Jay, you wish to start? Uh, thank you. Uh, you had me at Field of Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, not any specific questions, but maybe maybe some comments related to the project. I've been a uh, lifelong Dubuque mm -hmm. County resident. So uh, uh, like many people are nostalgic and, and know about people that were in the movie and how it was created and the different uh, uh, areas that were that were used and so um and a baseball guy it's you know what's not to love um but when I kind of look at my supervisor hat and then the business hat I see a lot of good things and so I certainly see that it's proven and I, I would agree with you on that so this isn't hey maybe we're going to try to do a major league game and a few others we have actually accomplished that and we have significant uh, evidence that this has dramatic appeal and, and upsides so, so proven is a big, big part for me. The next piece that I really like is the partnerships. Um, so you've got, I've got many of my colleagues from Travel Dubuque here uh, representing the community. So I'm proud to serve on that, that board. Um, and uh, the partnerships between Travel Dubuque, between the other government entities of City Dubuque, City of Dyersville, uh, Dubuque County, hopefully, and, and the state of Iowa already has skin in the game and, and hopefully we'll have more with uh, our renewed application. So uh, I, love, I love that partnership that uh, is just here. And I should, should say certainly the professionalism on the partnership too with Dan Evans and, and his, uh, his group bringing the professionalism of how to run uh, a major league event uh, is, is, is tremendous. And then lastly, which is the hardest part for me to, to get my arms around, but I've, I've done it over the years, is the future. Uh, so many times you, you want to have your eight-year-old be the eight-year-old playing little league in the little hometown field, but you know, they're going to grow up and they've got aspirations and you want to, you want the future to be as bright and big as possible. And so, uh, I am, I'm very excited about the one economic opportunities that this brings, uh, to all of Dubuque County and, uh, very much am a supporter. So I appreciate you and, and all the group that, uh, including Jackie in the city of Dyersville uh, has a, a, you know, a large stake in this over the last 30 years to, to get it to this point. So look very much forward to uh, uh, being a, a positive person and hopefully being a, a, a component for this success. I have to say, I thought your question, Supervisor Wickham, was going to be what mine is. When are the Cardinals coming? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great question. 
I thought that was definitely going to be the man's question. We, 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 we could modify the resolution. <laughs> second on that. You know, we have a little position right now. Uh, we haven't voted well, on it. That's put a little pressure. To people to Iowa. We right. don't want cards. Cup, cup fan in the middle, of course. And I'd like cup to see fan. the headline from the THB. Supervisors agree St. Louis Cardinals should play. Cardinals, <laughs> Cardinals Dodgers, right? Yeah. Chicago right. Cubs. My, my word choice actually would be that um, about generations. So, and this is the opportunity to use federal funding from the Biden administration. We have worked on this and I have listened to you, Keith, for years before the federal funding. How can we do this? We have to do it. This is the time, the momentum, all of those things, all of it is timed for this. So why this size of a gift? Because it's for the generations. So Saturday, we had a family wedding all throughout Dubuque County, Rickardsville, the marriage, down to Worthington for the reception, people from out of town. Um, and the question is, why? Well, who wouldn't want to be a leader, to use Kevin Costner's words? Who wouldn't want to be the leader that says yes to this proposal? So my 90-year-old uncle, my 85-year-old dad, baseball people from Dubuque County, born and raised, they're like, Ann, it's for the generations. Oh. So if reaching back to a 90-year-old saying, unlimited fixed income, yes, do this. It's for all the future generations. So when we're looking for something to point to, to say, what did we do with the Biden administration rescue funds? We helped bring the Field of Dreams a stadium here. That's the best we can do. You've shown tremendous ability to move all these pieces, Keith, you and Jackie and team. So joining with you, I'm, I'm happy to do so. And I'm pleased that I have this opportunity and that it's from the federal government. That even makes it into me more powerful. Thank you. Keith, I am very impressed with your presentation. This is that gift that's going to keep giving into the future. I mean, this isn't a one and done, this is going to affect our economy for years to come. The economic impact is unbelievable and it's just gonna keep getting better. I truly appreciate what you and Jackie and everybody have done to get this to this stage. Very supportive of it. Thank you. Thank you. Is it time to step back? and look at the resolution that we had tabled previously? Are we at that moment? We could bring I the resolution so, yeah. back up. And the resolution to approve the funding request from Travel Dubuque in the amount of $5 million for the ARP funds for the Major League Baseball Stadium. Well, definitely we are our largest to date. Uh, with American Rescue Funds. And so for a little context, you do have 9.4 million, but roughly we'll be receiving about $19 million, uh, the county will, from American Rescue Funds. And uh, from my understanding, uh, the state of Iowa already has contributed over 11 million for water and sewer. And uh, they do look for additional commitments from the state of Iowa, city of Dyersville, city of Dubuque, and travel Dubuque as well. Uh, so it won't be Dubuque County that uh, is, is alone in this venture. So it is a large dollar amount, but uh, I, I think it's the right one. Right. And, and also in the conversations that have happened over the many months, probably in excess of a year of the request from the governor and from economic development, Debbie Durnham, that the gift from the city, from the county, from our federal funds, our rescue money going to tourism needs to be significant. And so whether we lead the governor has been leading and it's important for us to join. So Jay, do you want to make the motion on behalf of the? Yes, I will make a motion to uh, approve uh, $5 million to the travel Dubuque entity for the major league baseball park at the field of dreams using the American rescue plan act funds. Found a second. I have a motion and a second to approve the allocation of federal funds to travel Dubuque for the Major League Baseball Park in the amount of $5 million. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Resolution carries. Well Congratulations, done. Kevin.
Good luck on the transition, Supervisor. Uh, Okay, next we will move to the next work session, the old highway road middle mile concept discussion. That would be with Anthony and Nathan. Or how we follow this up, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> Any kind of ba baseball acronym. You had me at fiber <laughs> optic cable. <laughs> <laughs> you build it, they will come. Yeah, it's, it's the Anthony get up and everybody bails again. Yeah, I know. It's like, let's <laughs> see how important we are here. Um, all I can say is that maybe this project might have some influence on the east west corridor traffic towards the Field of Dreams. So we might have a role to play in this. But um, so I'm going to start off with just stating. Um, our department's perspective on this project and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Nathan here but so old highway road from Farley all the way over to Seipel road is our primary project next year it is it is our priority one project that we're gonna we're gonna focus all of our attention to uh it includes um resurfacing the entire stretch um doing um, culvert replacements doing some uh, safety widening in some areas um and replacing the bridge over uh the railroad tracks at uh just west of Seipel road um, so it's it's going to be a major project for us. Um, obviously, um, it's going to be a, a major traffic issue as well. A lot of detouring going on, and um, you know. But uh, I'm excited about this project. It's it's a once in 25 year type project, you know. And we've been gearing up for this for a few years now. Um, at the same rate, it's a, it's a great opportunity to kind of segue into Nathan's world. Um, um, there's no really better project that we're going to have that's going to really connect the county from east to west all in one shot. Um, you know, it's rare that we see something this this long um, that also impacts, uh, you know, several cities, several towns. Um, and it, it could play a really great uh, role in, in connecting east to west and then maybe being, you know, sort of that main corridor to branch off of in the future. So. With that, um, that's what we have planned for next year for road construction. And I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Nathan to talk about his part here. Good morning. Good morning, supervisors. Um, so I'd like to do a very condensed brief recap of what I did back in January. Um, it comes down to digital equity. Digital equity is the cornerstone challenge that occurred during COVID. Um, it was glaringly obvious those that could do remote learning, that could do remote healthcare, do remote work, and have premium, premium entertainment when you're stuck at home. This is a giant swing at the pitch of, I know, I'm going to do as many baseball puns as I can. So it's a giant swing at the pitch to try to start leveling the playing field the what middle mile is not okay let me just be very clear middle mile is not about government competing with private sector it's not about competing with internet providers middle mile is about government building generational infrastructure that will level the playing field and allow governments, private sectors, nonprofits, healthcare, schools to leverage that infrastructure. We build roads, let's build digital roads too. And let's try to get some digital equity through a major population center of Dubuque County. We have Centralia, Epworth, Farley, potentially even Dyersville if we take it that far to the west here. This is the concept joining with the resurfacing project of Old Highway Road and potentially to take it all the way to Dyersville. NACO in their broadband task force has mentioned how important it is for governments to invest in infrastructure. Conduit and fiber is infrastructure. Since that report was released 10 months ago, there's been multiple 
additional conferences since then, and the consensus has just been driving home time and time again that it's governments that need to invest in the big connection points between these anchor institutions and then I'll bring in the private sector to get that last mile. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Don. Um, go to uh, anchor institutions, please. Yeah. Anchor institutions are the backbone of what middle mile is actually aiming for. Generally speaking, anchor institutions is where the people live. That's where the population centers are. This would be designed with stakeholders, with everybody that wants to get into the tent with us. So we bump up against any anchor institution, regardless of what it is. It could be a clinic, it could be a hospital, it could be a library. It doesn't matter. Anchor institution is anything that generally speaking doesn't move and has value to the people. We would get this near them, Western Dubuque, anywhere out in the county. So is this new? Is this radical? No, it's not. Is it new to Eastern Iowa? I think so. So Dubuque County could lead on this in the Eastern side of the state if you choose to go down this path. As an example though, can you go to the next slide please? So Lancaster, Nebraska, since I first proposed this last year, June, July 21, when I had private meetings with you and then the formal, formal submissions in September and January, there are multiple counties that are now going down this path. I chose this one because this is really fresh. This RFP just ended about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. Lancaster, Nebraska. We are not quite set up. We are way more spread out. But in their context, they're using what they want to do. They are connecting all of their anchor institutions and they are surrounding the city of Lincoln and then tying this middle mile conduit system into the existing Lincoln conduit system. Ours would be a similar premise. Some of these cities have their own conduit systems in place. Some of them are more advanced than others. We would work with them and figure out where does it make sense to have meet me points. So this is being done right now across the county, across the country. And it is my hope that the Board of Supervisors recognizes the value to also do something similar in a version that would make sense for Dubuque County. Good. I'm not necessarily asking for this commitment today, but you need to have an idea of what we're talking about cost-wise. So if this you know, dies here or scaled back or scaled up. All of this was originally designed and vetted with the original strings that were tied to ARPA. So the obviously since then, they were loosened about three, four months ago. But all of this can still come from the restricted bucket, which I believe is around 9 million. So if you're looking for stuff that will fit in that bucket, all of this will work from that. A lot of this is engineering. For this first go round, if this is chosen to be done, we do need to hire a professional engineering firm to help us get started on this and do this design. Phase two, phase three, I've had conversations with Anthony that potentially they could do some of this engineering in-house after we get our feet wet and get experienced in this sort of design. But for this stage, this is what we'd be looking at. It's about 30 miles, tip to tip. It would connect to the Southwest Arterial Conduit System. It would connect from their West Campus and depending where we want to coordinate and cooperate with Dyersville, we'd probably bring it all the way to Dyersville City Hall. So west, east, west, 30 miles. And then of course, tie it into the city conduit, city of Dubuque conduit system in you know, wherever partnership that would make sense for them. 
So what are we asking for today? So working with GGDC, they have done an exercise with the city of Dubuque to help them develop a master asset list. I would like to build something similar, but countywide. And GDDC can assist with this. They just need a formal request from the board for them to engage at that level of time commitment. There's no monetary cost to this. It's just, you have to formally ask them. A countywide asset list is in pretty good shape. I've been building that for the last year and a half. We're, we, I'm pretty happy with it. We need to refresh it, but it's pretty good. But what I don't have is an asset list of all the other cities. City of Dubuque is in great shape. They just finished that exercise, but Farley's, even Holy Cross, even the ones that we're not necessarily talking about this right now, let's get a list so we can get on a map and start putting thumbnails in it to see what does this look like phase two, phase three, phase four, even when we're not talking the east-west. I would like permission to start building the big tent. Go to the internet providers, go to the city clerks, go to the mayors, hospitals, school districts, <coughs> start talking to everyone about what this concept is, explain the value, explain the reasons, and get their knowledge, get their either positive or negative responses and get them to participate, whether that's knowledge, whether that's informational, whether that's monetary, start getting this tent built and get as many people on this train as we possibly can. And then I would like to formally request the board that, yeah, let's come back with formal documents to start taking this from a concept to something that can actually be acted on and built. Because we do have a time crunch here that ideally this is professionally designed, built, and is part of the bid documents that will be let when Anthony does his surfacing project. Some of this could be broken out if we go all the way to Dyersville, but ideally we get as much with his project as is reasonable so ideally we would have this rate of ship by December of 2022. Start doing yeah, I, I, I think generally I'm really supportive of the concept. Um, what I don't know, and I think I'm definitely supportive of your, your big tent philosophy and going out to the, the cities, going out to the, the, the governments, other healthcare providers, educational NICCs of the world, and certainly the consumers as well. Because what I need to understand is what is that demand? I know generally other people, you know, faster, better, but what is the true demand? Most people have internet today and it may be at acceptable levels. There are players throughout the county uh, that are out there currently, and they're providing a basic level of service, and some would say an advanced level of service. But what is the demand for fiber that will allow it to jump further than, you know, potentially 100 megs per second and just really make the difference? And so that, that's the question I'm looking for, is what is that demand from the business community, from the governments, and then from those other community stakeholders? It's my concern, uh, Piazza Farley, I believe, already have fiber. <clears throat> I guess what what can we do to improve that if they already have it? Reasonable question. In this instance, it will be to help promote additional competition. Remote work is the future. Remote work is here to stay. Hybrid work is here to stay. If they have fiber currently we will potentially go near their anchor institutions and their second and third internet fiber to the home internet providers would then have a path to at least have competition brought into that area some cities are in better shape than others and that's part of the gddc help us understand the assets help us understand the demand equation 
Right, that's what I need to know. What What is the demand for it? Have you applied for any of the infrastructure bill grants yet? Speed is not out yet, um, which is what you're referring to. We're going to take a swing at the pitch. The challenge is it filters through the states. Um, and Dubuque County, unfortunately, with their maps, we may not or may not even be eligible to apply. Um, I did a lot of time on something called Reconnect, a, a tremendous amount of time, actually. And it ended up that, no, after talking to our DC reps, it wasn't going to work for us. We would ourselves had to be the internet provider, which is not something Dubuque County is ready to take on. Well, how do we get any revenue back out of this? I guess, do we get, is there an opportunity for us to get some of the funding back because they're using our conduit? So the goal would be to try to offset some of the management costs going forward. And that is achievable. The way it would work is we'll potentially put in a seven way conduit. We, the county to connect our assets and any partners that may want to work with us directly, that would be appropriate. We would use one duct, potentially save a duct for the future unknown state maybe. And then the other five we would lease to any qualified partner. That could be a hospital, it could be an internet provider, anyone. We would want to try to work it to where the rates are similar to our partners. I'm not saying they have to be identical, but they would need to be similar to help private sector, you know, not get tripped over having to jump from one entity's condo system to another. That would generate some revenue to offset maintenance costs going forward. Realistically, I don't see this paying for itself in full, even over, you know, 50 years. If that is a requirement, that's not going to happen. And after consulting with GDDC, probably not either. This is infrastructure that supports generational change throughout the county. Your initial uh, request was for like 3.5 million for this, as I recall from. No, it was about seven and a half million. For 26 miles, it was three and a half million, I believe. Going out Harris's there, trail was right. about 3 million. Right, that was 26 miles. This is 30, so I <clears throat> can't think it would more than well, double for four miles more, would it? This is not using the trail any longer. The trail would be far cheaper. I mean, it's a trail. We don't have to close roads. It's just simpler. This would be going through cities, which is much more expensive. This is, I don't want to overpromise, but this is using the high end linear foot cost. This also for, I can inter interject, this is for the county to pay to go through the city of Epworth. Correct. Go through the city of Farley. Yes. In, in, in so this that. is assuming no <clears throat> cities partner with us monetarily to own or have a stake in this. This is if we just went straight through, did the permitting process, of course, and wrote our own and then potentially leased it back to the city if that's how they want to go. And some cities may want to do both. Some cities may want to lease it directly from us. They don't want to be involved with the design and owning of it. Some may want to have an ownership in it, in which case that financial equation would have to evolve. Okay. We have other questions? My questions really relate to um, the potential for, for other funding. Mm -hmm. You know, and I read the, the NACO newspaper that comes to us bi-weekly and broadband is everywhere, counties and cities as part of this uh, recovery money are doing this work and there's many millions if not billions more mm -hmm. from the federal level i don't what i've kind of reconciled in my mind is that i want that some of that funding yep. but you can't do it if we're not ready to take first steps right agreed so i have a, a, a list i mean this has been my life for about a year and a half now of all these various buckets and they do exist the challenge is we have to have a plan and we have to have something that's actionable if we're going to have any hope of being awarded any funds. 
that's just the way these things are scored, the way they're done. There's 42 billion in the infrastructure bill. Again, that goes to the states, but if we have a plan and we have commitment, we're gonna score higher. Through um, the NTSB, there's going to be a billion dollars just for middle mile. Like it's, it is literally for middle mile. We're not gonna have a swing at that pitch unless we actually have something we can submit with engineering plans and actual things that we are doing. And we need this grant to make this better, make this larger, service more people, service more miles. I'm, I'm just being blunt. I've, they score these things and we can't just expect them to give us this without having any of our own skin or any of our own action in the game. It seems really important to me that it's a connector. It's the east-west, right? So it's if we're going to do this, th th this is the time. We're going to have our major connector road or one of them, at least one that we get to control, right? Anthony's going to let it and it's going to go out and we're going to completely do it. And we're not going back for 25 years. So if we want to have that use a road as a connector, this is the time to do that. That's kind of how I've landed. And it is some of if we build it, will they come, right? We can't, we get, if we're until we're on the map, we're not on the map. Sure. So to me, I saw very much, Harley, that the request is less. It's getting to where I don't know you can trim any more. I personally, because I think, again, it's generationals, it's infrastructure that will stand for many generations being a partner with our county cities, I think we need to be there. I, I don't think this is gonna be a mistake. I think it's a direction to go and um, our, our dollars are dwindling, right? As we make our cuts. And so uh, over the weekend, you know, I, I'm scratching like, how does this fit for other priorities and what other would be, but I think this is an important project. And we always knew there wasn't gonna be sufficient funding for it. Right. So you go big on uh, Field of Dreams. We all knew that that was required. I think we gotta be in on this kind of broadband scope. It's what the rescue funds call out directly for tourism broadband. And um, I know many times I'm on meetings with folks and they're by phone because their internet's not quite good enough. I live in Asbury. I frequently use the county's hotspot. You know, again, just trying to build in the best resources we can. And I'm not saying that directly relates to the conduit question, but I, I mean, I've got my engineer and my IT director standing there. So I got I don't know better. And I, I think it's valuable for even our, some of our last dollars. John, could you go back to the ask slide, please? Nathan, can you tell me whether you think that this would, I mean, I've talked, you know, informally with mayors as best I can. They all seem to think that this is not all. Those that I have visited with think this is a good thing that would help their community. Is there a potential for it to be a budget return for them? Might they gain revenue from being able to use our conduit as we go by? So yes, the, the challenge will be how long you wanna measure that return on. And since we're government, we're not going anywhere. Measuring it over five, 10, 15, 20 years is reasonable. When we do the asset, list. Again, I know I'm sound like a broken record, but we go to anchor institutions and they will have locations like we do that they are currently paying somebody for the connectivity. When you design this sort of system, part of that design is to save money over the years. So you're using not, I mean, not free fiber because you have the cost up front, but like you're not cutting a check every month to CenturyLink to connect your fire department to your police station or whatever those anchor institutions are. 
You know, we could use a real simple example with the libraries, the Dubuque County Libraries. Currently they pay, there's five libraries, they have five internet pipes, five firewalls, five of everything. Is this gonna connect all five of them? No, not yet. I mean, we're talk, revisit this five years from now, but if you even have two of them near this, you eliminate one because now that is part of their network. And this scales up to anything, any kind of city network, anything. So when we do this, they, I have absolute confidence that they will be talking to their city engineers and whoever is their technology counterparts. Okay, so we're coming this way, we're doing conduit, where else do we need to hook up? Do we wanna like throw that in with this build and then do a change order or what, whatever the concept will be with that. So yes, there will be returns. It's just measured in a longer time span because we're not going anywhere. They'll be cutting the check forever unless they get their own fiber to connect their locations. And that's what I would really like to focus on in the plan. So I see your last request is to create a plan. So I think we all can envision uh, and write the check for this pipeline along Highway 20 because we do roads and you know we know what that looks like. But what does it look like when it branches off into Piasta and who does it serve and what is that value? And then when it's in Epworth and it goes to the north and south and a few other subdivisions, who does it serve and what are the benefits? And then just keep going down the line. That's, that's what I'm in looking for. Serve and what are the benefits? We can do that. The value, we, we can take a stab at it, but some of that's gonna be subjective, so. Uh, agreed, but to Supervisor Potoff's point. So, you know, I can call my brother who lives in Bird's Acres and say, hey, uh, what are you doing? Are you watching TV, you're streaming? And he'll go, yeah, I'm watching the Cardinals on direct TV stream. Well, how does that work? Well, we have Mediacom and that delivers a service that allows me to watch that game. Um, and same service that allows his kids uh, to, to do homework. Um, and so what's the value add now that it runs through Piasta that he can have this new system? What is that value add and when will he switch? And then when will examples, hopefully don't, Mighty M switch, when will Divine Word switch, when will NICC switch? when we build this? Is it the first year or 10 years from now? That's what I'm, I'm trying to gain an interest on, on the demand side. I will take a swing at that and we'll see. I, yeah, it's not gonna some be of that. We can help you with that too. We've got, we've got connections into the, the local governments and Greater Dubuque potentially could help because they, yeah, have, GDC is gonna they have, have outreach. Some of this might businesses. be confidential, but they might need to filter through GDDC. It comes down to cost. You know. yeah. Exactly. What's Mediacom cost compared to what's this going to be? Is this going to be higher than what medium co Mediacom costs? Well, your brother ain't going to switch if it's going to cost them more to go to this. Unless well, it's faster, quicker. I'm going, to, so I'm going to put my nerd hat on here. <laughs> Fiber is the only technology that's going to scale for the next 50, 60, 70 years. Yeah. Okay. And I, I don't make declarative statements in this chamber. I will make that declarative statement. Fiber is the only technology that is going to scale. Agreed. So my question, is it one year I or 10 years? That. The thing being a dollar is still a dollar is still a dollar. So if this cost me $20 and this cost me 10 and I get about the same thing, maybe this one isn't quite as fast, but it cost me half as much, I'll probably do it. That's what I'm talking about is value. If it's relatively the same comparative and I'm getting faster service, yes, I'll go to that. But at what point is the extra speed not really feasible for my wallet? Today. And what it might also do <laughs> Five years that, from now. Yeah. It, it lets the city build out infrastructure and then they achieve a cost reduction and they have better amenities for the next employer that comes, right? So what, what you see is your, this investment by the county with, again, federal administration funds your property taxes, we're providing that amenity and the infrastructure that goes out so that they're not trying to do that. And maybe there's gonna be, you know, an opportunity for them to capitalize on that by having some local employer or a, a provider of some other type 
want to use that network. Maybe it's for them to decide inside their city, and their town, if it's a return on investment. But if they're not in the, if they're not in the game. If they're if it's not available, then that option is not for them. Worthington can't do this by themselves. They can't ever muster the ability to bring this to them in a way that isn't competitive. They might enter into an agreement with a provider that is, you know, then you're controlled by that provider in whatever iteration those people become. But that's what I see. This is that equality issue. So for me, it is great value. And I'll just put one last point. I'll circle this back around. So we have field of dreams, obviously, big economic, awesome. COVID has upended the professional working environment. If you're an engineer, you're a software developer. If you're an HR specialist, remote work is here to stay. Hybrid work is here to stay. The businesses that are fighting against that and are swinging back. Like this is every day I have listservs of corporations and job openings. I love Apple. Apple is bundling this horribly. They are forcing their people to come back and they are shedding engineers and software developers at a rate that no company is shedding. Then you flip that around, you have Airbnb two weeks ago announcing this is it, no more changes. This is the final word. If you wanna work remote, you can work remote. We don't care where you live. We don't care where your zip code is. We're not gonna change your salary based on your zip code. That can exist in Dubuque County. Dubuque County is awesome. Our conservation is amazing. We're gonna have a ballpark. Like it, it is a good place for people who wanna buy five acres and put a house in the center and still make six figures being a software developer for Airbnb, it's doable. But in my opinion, government needs to take an active role in stimulating and promoting broadband throughout the county. We're not gonna become our own internet provider. We're not gonna become the last mile. What we can do is build middle mile to get these big anchor institutions, these cities, get this constructed. And in my opinion, this is an excellent first swing at the pitch doing that. What do you feel and think? You've heard some of my requests of, you know, time frame and I need to understand the demand from the business side, the education and the community side. Is that going to take you three weeks next year? Well, <laughs> I, my, my question yeah, to the I mean, board I, And I like the, the construction with this. So, you know, when, when do you want to be back or when, when do you think you can have many of these questions answered? I would propose we'll be back in two weeks with at least some of the questions. Okay. Like we're going to move as fast as we can because this is, we're under a time crunch here if we're going to work with Anthony. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just add a little bit to that. So right now we're planning on bidding out the bridge on Old Highway and the, the road itself altogether. Um, it's a far, it'd be a far and marker project. So we, we need to have final plans in by like December to get into a March letting. And that's the, the time frame I like to be at. If we felt this was an extremely important project to couple with this and we, but we need to take some time to develop this. I'm okay with doing division one, division two over a couple of years, say the bridge next year. And then the, the road project the following year. That would be kind of the worst case scenario for me. Um, but at the same time, I still want to try to make a priority that we do this all together. Um, but the, yeah, the biggest question is how quickly can we move on the uh, analysis of this and the design work to get this all fit in together? You wouldn't let this project out and you wouldn't have your designs done until when? Fall, winter? We we're working on designs right now. So okay. um, check plans, I think, are due around uh, November-ish. Okay. So final plans to be around December. So, so we still have summer to fall yeah. to flush this out. And so yeah. I, I think it's ample time. I don't think we're going to discover anything. I don't think there's anything undiscoverable, you know, outside of the next three months related to this project. Some of it could be, you know, if, if we get with the partners and we, we think we need to have more communication time with the cities and um, the providers and whatever, 
you know, that's kind of the unknown. I maybe even in your world, that's kind of the unknown. But um, hopefully, we can get on this quickly and and flush this out and and uh, get this to be a part of our project. Good. In, I'm good. Well, I guess I want to ask my my colleagues um, if this is an important project. Then I think we need to put a stake in the funding, and we need to be willing to say that we are going to assign federal funds to this so that we're holding that funding back and in reserve and not funding other projects that take us over $19 million. That's how I would, I would like this to be through the federal funding that we do this. And if we don't come to some consensus that we're gonna reserve you know, $5 million to do that or 5.5, then are we telling Anthony and Nathan to go forward with whatever is left? I mean, don't we need to kind of make a commitment to them? I definitely agree with you on the American Rescue Funds. So I would like to see federal funds used for this project. What I would like is a plan. And that's what you're asking permission to do is let me get out to the community and say, I need to gather some information and talk to you because we're creating a plan to, to approve this. I am not ready to carve out or allocate funds at this moment. I need a plan. I need to know that the entities that I mentioned, and then we didn't even talk about the service providers, I've got four of them listed right here, that they're in. And I need them in either two weeks or a month to be standing there with you saying, yeah, this, is, this has value. That's what I need. I wasn't gonna have all your questions in two weeks. I just meant we're gonna come back with some stuff in two weeks. Agreed, but that, that's what I need. I need, I need that plan. And I need to know that this will have a return on investment, not in 10 years or 20 years, probably closer to three, not 100%, but that will have usage. I have no interest in doing what we did with the Southwest Arterial. We paid for fiber, sitting there, it's not even connected. I do not want that to happen on this large amount. So it has to be utilized. Therefore, we've got to get to the demand side. We've got to get to the businesses, the communities, the you know, the, the educational entities to make sure they'll say, yeah, you build it, we'll hook up. All right, but <clears throat> Ann's portion is, we still have to earmark funds if we're gonna use ARP funds, because we are going to be discussing that again today. Uh, agreed, I'm just yeah, saying, you know saying, I'm not ready we, to earmark them now. I want the plan, you're still in, Proposal mode from I'm not saying we're giving it. I'm just saying that, hey, okay, we have five million that may be spoken for for infrastructure here. Let's not go over what I'm not there yet. So I mean I'm 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 not ready to commit a dollar to this. I voted against the other fiber on Southwest Arterial for that very same reason. And so I see no value in investing in fiber that nobody wants tell me they want it and, you know, prove to me that demand side and I will help with that. And I think, you know, and I'm confident if the technology's there and, uh, you know, our rationale to say, here's what's there, we'll get the internet providers, we'll get the cities, we'll get the education and we'll get some of the consumers to say, yeah, this sounds like a really good idea. R right now it's just you two, which is great, but I need to hear from that, uh, that other side. Supervisor Pat, if you and I voted for the Southwest Arterial, it's $150,000, I think, for all time access. Forever access. Forever, forever access, access to uh, conduit along the Southwest Arterial. And I would take that vote again today. And this is, this is a piece to move toward that. Um, Supervisor Wickham, I do listen to you because I know you have great expertise in this area but my return on investment isn't the same as yours. And it's probably because I don't understand it as well as you do. So for me, it is, is it infrastructure? And I see those maps that the governor sends out and we're not in her funding plan. This is us going alone. I don't see how we get bigger dollars to build this out unless we start. So whether that's the 5.5 or whether it's some other number, but I don't have to have the whole run 
to know that I need to be in the game and I'm done using those baseball activities. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm supportive of this. And I think and feel that there'll be a demand there and the public will benefit. What I'm asking is, where are they? Right. Where are their comments? Where are the connections? And so, you know, I know I lived in Piasta when Mediacom came out there. Mediacom came out and they actually cut up my invisible fence for my dog. You know? So that's why I remember it. And they, they put, you know, they put their cable connections to each home. And they did that because they, one, wanted to service that area and provide better internet and or better TV viewing. And so I get it, um, but where are those internet providers? What, how big and robust are, you know, are their eyes related to this project? And then the communities and all those things. So um, I just want to hear that and, uh, you know, and, and study it. You know, we can, we can look at, the numbers are easy to manage. You know, if you look at uh, the greater Piasta area, you've got maybe 3,000 people there with the unincorporated subdivisions. What's your adoption rate? You got 300 businesses between, you know, Piasta, Epworth, Farley, maybe a few more, a few less. What's going to there be their adoption rate? If they all say 100%, that's easy. If you get it, well, I'm okay right now, then we might want to ask ourselves, is this the best place to put 5 million? I hear you. My asks are not for five and a half million right. a day for the it plan. Is permission to start talking to people because for i don't we have not had that until well we still don't have it so, <laughs> so are we in agreement that the answer to those questions are yes yes i um, yeah yes yeah absolutely so yeah so we, we were jumping ahead already digging writing checks so i'm, I'm good so. <laughs> but no this is this is what i'm this is what i need today and let us know how we can help with you too. Okay, we don't want to just throw it over here. We we all work with the local governments. We all work with education, the business. Oh, I'll be reaching out. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. So how we can help you gain some of that feedback. So um, the formal request to GDDC would need to come from the board of soups. So, Ed, I don't who's know. our? Uh, just I'm, a, on the, I'm on the yeah. executive. Okay, I mean, and I'm glad. I'm happy to do that. They know exactly what's coming. It's just they can't come from okay. me. I'll do it together. Be Thank good. You. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Anthony. Next, we will move forward to a uh, work session uh, regarding the ATV UTV ordinance. I uh, believe that entailed uh, a public hearing being set for uh, May 16th. Two options on that. I think that's going to need a motion for us to set the public hearing. Mary's nodding her head. Well, there's two separate. Uh, you could go two different ways on it. If I can find it here, I'm sorry. I believe one was to set the public hearing to just uh, delete the uh, sunset date which would, uh, our ordinance would continue on under the current guidelines, uh, waiting to see if the state takes action. The second one would be, we would amend the ordinance, uh, any amendments and go through that process. Uh, it, it's a uh, quickest, route would be or the easiest route would be to just remove the uh, sunset clause and if the state for some reason does not take action we can make amendments to the ordinance at any time right. so would you like to proceed i would be looking for amendments um so i certainly would want to hear uh, from the additional uh use the groups and uh, see what they they feel and think. We've heard some of those comments. I've received some of them. You probably have as well related to time operation and or potentially other roads <coughs> being open. So uh, slight modifications. That's what I would be looking to do. Okay. And that could be done either way. I mean, we could do that before. But then we'd be 
if the state takes it over, well, then a lot of it would be for naught. But, um, and I, I mean, I have no issue going either way with it if we want to do amendments for the times or open some roads that were closed or whatever. We just have a timeline that we have to follow that we have to get things completed by. I don't understand what your question is. Is it a question? It's whichever way my colleagues want to proceed with it. If we want to uh, make amendments to it and or if we just want to go with the uh, public, excuse me, public hearing for March 23rd at 9 a.m. And that would just be the amendment to include the removal of the sunset clause. That would just extend it, waiting for the state to come out, it, whether the state's going to take action or not take action. I think it, I just point this out for whatever purpose this is. I, you know, again, big family wedding this weekend and lots of family members who y'all know who ride. And I said, yeah, we're for sure that sunset clause is going to go away. And they're like, awesome. And I said, I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. Removing the sunset clause means something to us differently than it means to somebody who rides. Right now they have to be off by sunset, right? Okay, 5 a.m. to sunset, the time of operation. Exactly. So then the conversation got a little more, we needed another beer. So, but yeah, so there's two things. One is, I think we have strong consensus to absolutely not let this expire. Right. It's got to continue. That's easy. We can do that real fast under the time, public notice, we're done and we're done. Other things like the times to ride and roads, I think we do need to have a broader discussion about that. I don't know if that can all be done on this timeline to beat the end date. So maybe we do the easy thing, remove the termination clause so it moves forward and then go about our business getting the language correct for what changes need to be made. Right, not just keeps us in line for if the state does take action on it. Right. I don't know, it's sitting at the Senate now and it's on the calendar, but doesn't really mean anything. I think they're both easy. So I think we can agree potentially um, on a compromise of a new time. That's what the clubs are asking us. That's what the users are asking for us. Um, I think we potentially could agree on one or two changes in roads. Uh, it was very difficult the first time. Didn't have to be, but it was. Um, and we got through that process. So I, I would I would ask my, my colleagues to entertain the changes that been presented to. And if you're not familiar with it, they can state those. And so an extension of the hours and potentially a modification of one or two roads. That's the only modifications that I'm, I'm looking for. And that's the only modifications I've really heard from the group. Right. And, and I think we, if we look back, you know, there were some concerns. And so we intentionally, you know, put uh, the ability to, to discuss this, which we are today. But I think generally speaking, uh, it's been well received and uh, we've had good fortune. And so we'd like to, I'd like to continue that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I can go either way on it. Um, I don't think it would take a lot of extra meeting time to discuss uh, a couple amendments. It's not just a couple of amendments because changing the time is a significant amendment, right? So now people are driving by your home on a machine at one in the morning, two in the morning, five in the morning. I, I do think you, we should visit with the sheriff. He and I've already talked about that. I think that there's going to be some folks who aren't in the room yet today who think that's a big change. That's not a minor change or an easy change. They're going to want to be heard on that. So we want to make sure that the process allows those people to be engaged in the conversation as well. You know, we're well, not going to send out a deputy for a loud noise at four in the morning. Right? That, that is what the public hearing is for. Right. It is for these right. people to discuss their issues. And then the other people we need to make sure we have in the table at stakeholders is that the people behind us, when we make a change, 
there are other people who will change. Several of the cities have ordinances that mirror ours. They will have to go through their process, likely consult their legal counsel. And if the state is going to make different changes, then we're all going back through this again and again. And, and likely they do hire legal counsel to do that. So there's some- and That would be the advantage of just removing the sunset clause and to see if the state takes action. The sunset clause is- Not the hours. Correct. We we all agree we want to continue it. So that that should absolutely happen. We need to do the public hearing and right. get ready to do that. But if we that. just go that way with removing the sunset clause by another month, we're gonna know if the state's gonna take action. Well, if they don't, okay. We can make the amendments to the ordinance any day of the week we want. That's not an issue. So I would be happy to make the motion to set the public hearing to amend the ordinance so that the provision that it terminates June 30th is removed. That's the notice of public hearing that I'd like to support. Discussion on that or motion, Jay, or? I'm unclear, so I won't be sucking in. Okay, this would be just a motion to remove the sunset clause and set that for the public hearing on May 23rd at 9 a.m. The sunset clause meaning, meaning the end date of the ordinance, which would keep us in the timeline and we can make ordinance changes at any time. After that, this would just set it for the May 23rd, 9 a.m. removing that sunset clause. That way, if we don't come to consensus on the amendments, we still have be, this set. You won't, I won't be seconding that at this moment. Okay, I will second that. I do have some discussion. So okay. Thank you. Um, so what I would be looking to do is have a public hearing and have one, the continuation of the ordinance go, uh, but two have discussion, and I don't think we're clear yet, but have discussion on other components of the ordinance, that being the, the time of operation and the routes. Right, and we can amend that at any time. I would prefer to amend that now and talk about it now and resolve it now. That's I mean, not both today's can. meeting and or can't do that right now. We have to have a public meeting. This is the well, public meeting that will remove. Maybe, the not, re maybe not resolve. Yeah, I understand how the process works, but at least have dialogue here where we either agree or come to an agreement. And, and what I'm fearing, let me rephrase this. What what appears we're going to do is just approve the ordinance as is. Continue it. We're continuing it, yeah. waiting to see what the state's going to do. I hear you. I just don't because agree. Because if that we process. stick all this in and the state passes it and it's the all this wow. in is what all I'm asking is for what I've heard from the public and the riders um, is change in hours of operation. Right. And, and I have no I have no issues with that. Can we add that into the motion? That we will change hours of operation and change routes in addition to changing what's called the sunset date. That's what I would that would that's what I'm looking for. To That's not my motion. Right, I know that. I'm just looking what the other one was. Uh, the other one is just uh, giving notice of the public hearing on the ordinance. It doesn't uh, list right. anything. We were going to hold a separate public hearing on this. So we were trying, my re recollection is we were doing two things in parallel. One was getting ready so that it doesn't run out of time to not let it lapse, right? We want everyone to be in compliance with the law. We want the good things that are going, we want them to continue clearly. That's the May 9th, that can happen, public hearing, we go toward that. Right. If we're gonna make the other things happen, then it was a different public hearing thinking we would have a room full of people who wanted to be heard. And I think that was May 23rd because right. it's at our evening meeting. Is that where we were trying to be at? That is not the evening meeting. Maybe it was just the next time it could publish in time. May 23rd is a 9 a.m. meeting. Excuse me. 
as the auditor has on here. Third at 9 a.m. As the auditors, he has that you're approving the notice of public hearing next week. And then with the publishing deadlines, we wouldn't be able to hold the first public hearing until, and I'm gonna make a correction, that's, that's gonna be Tuesday, May 31st. Um, May 30th is a, is a recognized holiday. So that would be your first public hearing, would be Tuesday and the evening meeting. Last we'll meeting, it. last Monday, we were making faster steps. You, okay. That, that nope. was, we were trying to move faster okay. than the timeline that Kevin had laid out because we were not anticipating two additional public hearings. But right now we have to have some public hearing for people to be able to talk about anything. Should it continue? Should there be a time change? Maybe there are people in the community who wanted it to end at the end of the June. Well, could we run, run them simultaneous? approve both of the public hearings, one for removal of the sunset clause and then one for the amendments to the ordinance. Okay, I've dealt with ordinances for over 20 years. Uh, I would suggest because you have people coming forward that do want minor changes to the ordinance in the hours and the routes, and you wanna remove the sunset clause, if you set the public hearing for people to be heard at that public hearing, you can um, des or decide what changes will be made. And you can have your, um, make the amendments to the ordinance. All three amendments would be done at the same time. And you don't have to have your second and third readings. You can waive those. You would be, even with the publication only taking in the two papers once a week, you would still be within your deadlines to have it published because the ordinance has to be published because it takes effect. It doesn't take effect until it's published in the paper. So to meet all the deadlines, you could do this at one reading, publish the ordinance, it's in effect, and then the people that want the hours changed, by the time you hold your three public hearings just for the sunset clause, and then you hold public hearings to change the time, you're in the summer and these people want their hours changed now. And this way you could be within the timeline and do both the amendments and, and remove that, that sunset clause. That's my suggestion. So then that's not the uh, notice of public hearing that we want to approve them. I don't think we're approving anything today, it sounds like. Pardon? I don't think we're approving anything today, are we? No. Well, we have to approve the notice of public hearing, don't we? I don't, can we put up the notices? Don, can you put up the notices of public hearings? Could we see what we're talking about? Yeah, I have. A work session packet. I know it's a work session, but I have the public the notice of public hearing for May 23rd at 9 a.m. for both of them. the sunset clause, part 13 sunset clause on it. So do we need to approve one of them or just approve the public hearing for the 23rd for the because we'll have to, we'll ha if you want to have it on the 23rd, we'll need one of these notices approved today so we can publish for next Wednesday to hold it on the 23rd. So one of these would need to be and approved today. This amendment that we're looking at here today is open-ended. It doesn't have the details related to the sunset. It's just, we're going to review this ordinance and we could change one thing or a hundred. I would propose we change three things. 2831, which is the sunset clause, which is the date of it ending, 2813, which is hours of operation, and then 
least in my document, Appendix A, or referred to as Addendum A. So it's got two names. And that's basically the roads that are restricted. So just those three items. But I wouldn't have to call those out because we could change any of the right. items by using this one, right? Agree. Okay. I think I'm clearer now. And so your your motion was related to the, the previous uh, document. My previous motion was public. to make clear that we were removing the what's legally called the sunset clause. It is misunderstood broadly in the community, right. but it is removing the, the ending of the ordinance, which I think is what most people generally want to know whether we're going to continue the ordinance or not. That's, I think, simple and clear. I think everybody knows we're going to continue the ordinance and what we want to do is just make some amendments to it, but we have a timeline to follow. And I, this is the second notice of public hearing is the one that I prefer to go with, that we can make those amendments. As Mary said, we can make those changes and waive the hearings and everything will stay right on timeline. Both of these were created by the auditor after Monday's conversations. Right. And the one that you had made the motion on was yeah. basically right. just- We have a, a motion and a second on- We have a motion and a second on the first uh, notice for the sunset, remove the sunset clause. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. I'll oppose nay. 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 I will make a motion to approve the notice of inner document of the 1030 workstation, work session, excuse me. It's called the NPH, Notice of Public Hearing, ATV Public Input Hearing, which is shown on the screen, the courtroom, to this court, <laughs> in the courthouse today. May 23rd, public hearing. I will second that. Okay. In discussion. So the ordinance terminates at the end of June, is that correct? We can remove it with this. I'm just asking, I wanna make sure we right. don't inadvertently right. in all our cleverness run out of time, right. right? That's the worst thing that can happen is that it collapses for two weeks. That's ridiculous. So if we do this, we have a public hearing on the 23rd, we don't know what it is that we're gonna be trying to draft or redraft. Well. We can remove the sunset clause with this, mm -hmm. and we can make amendments to the time and the roads. And, we all know there's to, roads that we'll we need to, to change. And they'll need to write it, and council will need to review it, and then it needs to come back to us to look at the final language. I mean, in order, it's not, it's an ordinance. So it takes a little bit of stricture to get this so that it's right. And I just don't want us to be, you know, CJ, you're nodding your head. It's got to be, we got some work to do here to change an ordinance no matter what. Agreed, Supervisor McDonough. And I'll state again, agreed, we will be changing things. And it doesn't have to be hard, it can be easy. Three items, at least from this chair. You guys have your own chairs. 2831, 2813, and what's known as Appendix A or Addendum A. That's it. That's all I'm interested in changing. It's not the whole world. I've been through this movie before. I don't want to repeat it, okay? Three items, that's all I'm looking to change. And I think it's fair enough that we have a public hearing where people have that. Those are my three. And we hear, maybe there's three more, maybe there's three less. The only ones to just lock it in to what you believe we should do, I think is not fair to the public that uh, should have public input on this, both for and against the items I'm proposing to change. There's, there's nothing, in, I have no motive here, okay? There's no motive. My, my concerns about public safety have been proven to be good, adequate concerns, but you've all ridden, risen to the task. Well done. That's, that's a huge success for Dubuque County to have learned to ride and do it well. I don't have a motive here. I'm trying to make sure that we do this so that we don't have some kind of a collapse. We should be able to do this. And also it tell you what the mayors have said to me. They'd really like to see the state do this so that they're not oh, in the well. road, right? Or, so how do you do that? So we've got our decision. We're moving forward. And 
you know, we'll see how it all comes out. I think it's great democracy. I think the changes are pretty easy. Uh, I think the roads will be agreeable on the times there may be some discussion on. Uh, Ask the sheriff about the time. I, I'm familiar with that aspect of it and several other aspects of it. Uh, so I, I, I think it will be easy for us to come to consensus on that and move forward and get it posted in the amount of time. Very good. I'm committed. So we have a motion and second to approve the notice of public hearing for May 23rd at 9 a.m. Uh, that will be for the ordinance on the ATV UTV. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we'll go to the 1045 Dubuque County Mental Health Fund 10 Project Progress Report. Sorry. It'll be on the 23rd. I think uh, Ron kind of stated everybody's feelings on that already for the times and Good morning, um, I am Cameron Williams um, from the Dubuque County <clears throat> Mental Health and Disability Services. Today, brief update, um, uh, just to let you know that we are on track for spending every dollar that the Board of Supervisors approved for fund balance um, projects earlier this year. Um, swung around and connected with almost every um, organization. I'm still waiting a phone call back from one of them, but there were no concerns from any individual organization uh, leadership that thought they were not going to be expending those funds. And, and there was, could you put that back? Were you, yep, I'm are you messing there. with my presentation? Right. Um, thank you for that. Uh, on Thursday, I received updated information that I did not have when I submitted my paperwork to Ed Raber on that. So, and if you can expand that, I just can't even read a word that's on there. <clears throat> so you can just see these are all of the fund balance projects. Um, we're really um, getting up in the um, in the percentages of spend down. For most of them, Clark University is zero because their program has not happened yet. It is scheduled to happen. It's a training program that's happening in May. And then once they have the training, they will, they will ask for reimbursement um, from the region on that. Do you have any questions? I do believe Riverview Center also um, submitted claims to uh, a large extent, I think to like $67,000 of the 70,000 on um, Wednesday, but it was not yet captured by our data. So we're in, we're in good, good situation here. Well, I, I, and I appreciate you doing all this, Anne. You take my calls and I'm like, I know what's going on because I get nervous. And you know, when I'm at a regional governing board and <coughs> they show that we're not spending the money I mean, there's no second chances at this. It's got to be out the door or we've lost opportunity. So I appreciate you reaching out to those people. I, I am concerned though about the geriatric brain health. Um, that is a report we should be getting and I would think they would know more about, I mean, that's a, that's a do back a report to us. And um, so we're just that doesn't seem like very much is being done there. So after talking with Mike Fidgen uh, specifically about that, I had the same concerns. He assured me that they were doing the work, the, that you would be pleased with the report, um, that they are uh, either preparing or going to be preparing from the data that they've been collecting. So it's an active project. Um, one thing that we might wish to consider is, as Supervisor McDonough just said, there is a process of reallocating. We cannot e reallocate funds 
if we have um, a standing contract, say for $100,000, we cannot just simply say, we're gonna take away $15,000 from your, your um, fund balance project, unless we have that conversation with the provider who agrees to sign a release of that $15,000. And then once we have that in hand, then we're in a position where we can expend those monies. Otherwise, I would be worried that we would be out, out um, exceeding our spending authority. So I'm going to stand firm and, and help us not be in that position. At the same time, should one of these projects, um, if, as we're looking at June 15th. Time's over, Anne. There's no more wiggle room. May 12th. Thursday of this week is the last opportunity for the region to make any changes. Exactly right. So I that's can. that's why I think we've got the commitments from the individual providers to, to actually spend the money in the way they promised you. But if they don't spend it, it comes back and well, it'll go to the state. It goes to the region. Or to the region. And then the, the region machinations um, will affect what funding we get next year from the state. You're making them aware that they have to get it spent. So, I, I believe they are all highly aware of that, and um, <laughs> I'm the person that calls with the big stick sometimes. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're spending that money. It's a, it's a, and they they return my calls. Isn't that awesome? That's it. Any Last questions? Yeah. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you for the update. You. Last thing, I'm just going to hand out. These are brand new. Um, these are for. Uh, Jail Diversion Resource Guide. And I'm gonna make sure you have each of these. These are brand new. Thank you. I see the sheriff's here as well. Maybe he would give one for him. How can I? These were handed out at the I'm regional governing board. Reader. These were at the regional governing board and I wasn't in person due to a conflict. So I asked that Ann get these to us. Some good information about jail diversion throughout the region. Thank you, Ann. Uh, next, we'll move to the work session for discussion and tentative funding allocations for ARP funds. That was a big day, record day for us, right? Mm -hmm. Five million plus the other official ones. <clears throat> You bring up that you have your Don. list up there, Don. I believe we start with four mounds, if I'm not mistaken. One in our document, right? Or our packet? Well, we have a wide. There you go. Okay. Okay. So you'll, you'll, you're taking in consideration the approvals from today. Is that what you're saying? Uh, What's okay. changed? Well, this, this hasn't made that. Good enough. I'm not sure anything changed between Thursday when you posted this and today versus what we just decided. <laughs> Anywho. Is there anything wrong with working off the PDF that's a little clearer? I mean, I do spreadsheets a lot, but your PDF seems pretty clear. Okay. Do you go on the microphone, good. Ed? That would be more helpful to me. Sounds good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. What we, uh, this is Ed Raber. What we do, most of the meetings in which you discuss this stuff, um, in the board packet is a PDF file. That's all of the documents in the board packet are that. Um, as you discuss these things, in order to be responsive to what you do, we try to have a live spreadsheet here. Um, I may help my colleague here in a moment, uh, sit there uh, to, to, to do that. But we'll take the notes 
actually live in this spreadsheet as you move along. Okay. First up will be the Four Mounds Foundation, the community access and engagement at Four Mounds, $500,000, uh, community center or access point. It's a bathroom. Pardon? It's a bathroom. Sorry. It's a bathroom at Four Mounds. Bathroom. Um, more than just a bathroom. But <clears throat> Jay, any uh, feelings on that? I've been to Four Mounds uh, numerous times and I've seen some of their programming. It's generally good. Um, I could see their, their need um, that they don't have a you know, common or a group location that people can use for their facilities when they have larger events and or their ropes course and the various programs. Um, I wouldn't say it scored high on my list compared to others. So I would say I'm lukewarm. I uh, read it over. I mean, it, it is a good proposal. It's I, I can see the need, but I recall four mounds of city property and uh, Four Mounds does do a lot of good things, but I, I'm not sure I'm up to uh, $500,000 on a bathroom or, and classrooms. Unless there would be some input with the city on it. Because like I say, I believe Four Mounds is city property, isn't it? Yes, owned by the city and then uh, managed by Four Mounds, a nonprofit. Yes. That's my understanding. Dan? I'm, um, I'm not in favor of this, so I'm a zero. I don't know if I'm at a zero, but I'm definitely not at 500,000. I think I'd want a little more information to see if there would be a way the city would uh, partner on part of that. Uh, Jay, your thoughts? I, I think I'm following your logic. I'm with you on that train of thought. So if we hypothetically had a dollar amount and the city would match it, that would be what you're kind of thinking? Something to that effect. Uh, okay. I would be I would be open to that and certainly welcome that ask back to the nonprofit. I think we'd ask the nonprofit if they would want to resubmit a number with matching funds from the city. Is that what right. I'm I'm comfortable with that if we'd make that request. We want to have a dollar amount attached to it because they might say, well, if it's one dollar, that might be easy. If it's four ninety nine, that might be well, harder. What do you? I would say that we would match what the city puts in. You know, if the city Fair wants enough. to pay for half of it. We'll pay for half. If they're only going to put in fifty thousand, well, we'll put in fifty thousand. I I'm comfortable with that. Put that in. I'll reach out to Four Mounds, see what, uh, see if they can come up with something. So just put a hold on that one for now. Okay, thank you. I can't hear you, Ed. He's going to make that request. 
Next, we have Goodwill Industries of Northeast Iowa Inclusion Works for $682,344. This is for uh, disabled uh, people uh, helping them find jobs, which there's several organizations already helping with that. Uh, I think Goodwill is contracted through Northeast Iowa Workforce Development Board, Title I uh, things. I'm thinking this is kind of an overlap. Uh, the Northeast Iowa Workforce Development Board just uh, put, ex and I think, two extra employees in Dubuque here to help with uh, <coughs> workforce issues and not real supportive on that. I mean, seems pretty high. <laughs> yeah. okay. I got nothing to say, go ahead. Jay. It's another one, I'm lukewarm on. I know they had uh, you know, kind of a, a marketing outreach to uh, to the businesses and then they had uh, events scheduled led to a speaker. Um, I can see the need. I'm not sure if that's the best method to, to resolve their issues. I mean, I wouldn't claim to be an expert, but I don't know if we want to be funding the actual events of a speaker coming from out of town. It just seems that's a reach for rescue funds. I just, like I said, it's a duplication of services and I'm not I just don't think it's the right place for that. I think it's a great proposal. It's it's a really great proposal. Oh, it's a good proposal. Great proposal, but... and it's all it's it's matching people with disabilities with jobs they can do in a workforce where we need them, with a coach, with a mentor, and they're asking us for assistance in making that message be bigger. It's a great application. I just don't think we can afford it any longer. It is a great application, but I also believe they're getting funded from the Northeast Iowa Workforce Development Board to do that. I don't that's, know that. I don't I know anything about that's that. I believe so. Okay, very good. Sounds like that one will not move forward. Did you want to make a motion to deny the request then, or how do you want to handle that? But is there something we need to do to move these administratively? Ed Raver, if you, um, because it's a work session, you're not really taking action. If just by your verbal consensus, you ask us to do any of these actions, we just noted here and that project, if uh, it does not have any support, we will call it denied and um, uh, moving forward, it would move to the bottom of this list. So not asking for any formal action, but we're just understanding this. They'll just not be moving forward with a resolution or anything later. Again, next to be the ACAP uh, affordable housing, 525,000. Start on that end. I would take no action. That is not my preferred housing. Um, I think we're in competition with individuals, as I said at the work session. This is in direct competition with first time home buyers. Sorry, what? It's in direct competition with first time home buyers. They want to buy properties that are inexpensive and renovate them and then sell them and give them to a few people. And I don't think that is just not my, that's not how I would prefer to look at housing. Okay. So I would not take action on this under the guidelines I just heard Ed Raber state. Okay. It, it wasn't one of my priorities. Um, housing is very challenging, um, very difficult. Uh, the county hasn't been in the housing game as much as the city and others. Um, 
I would probably be at uh, a lot less funding if we did fund fund anything, but that might not be viable related to their attempt to purchase homes and assets. All right, I uh, I would agree with Ann that it is in direct competition with the people trying to buy homes. You know, they're trying to buy them and rehab them, but uh, I just don't feel it's the right place for the rescue funds at this time. I would be in favor of not moving it forward. Okay. Next would be the Holy Family Catholic Schools, the expansion and renovation of the Holy Ghost Early Childhood Care Center. That's for 585,000 uh, for daycare. Where are you at on it, Harley? Pardon? Where are you at on that? I think it is a need. Uh, obviously, child care is a huge need in county here. Uh, it was a very good presentation. I think they uh, definitely have the right uh, combination to get people there, location and uh, staff. I could be flexible on the amount, but I, I would be willing to move that forward. Your thoughts? I would move it forward. I'm definitely supportive. We've made some good headways with uh, with child care issues related to both the in home with the Butte County Early Childhood and some of the centers like this one. Um, so definitely a supporter. Uh, if the board is at 585, I would support that. If there's a little lesser amount, I'm, I'm willing to agree to that as well. But uh, I think it's one of those priorities related to child care that. Um, would help uh, move that along in a, in a really good area of the uh, of the county as well that probably has the strongest needs. I think we'll just uh, move it forward for this time and uh, <clears throat> we can decide it on a uh, amount. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, at the next discussion, Julian <clears throat> Julian Dubuque International Film Festival. <clears throat> oh, no, Dan, I think it's an easy one. The, the, the amount of the request is modest, and I think the impact that it has related to Dubuque and, and just the, the goodwill, the, the, the expansion of the arts, and uh, just uh, one additional small little feather in the cap of, uh, uh, of Dubuque related to uh, the arts and or tourism, uh, 26,600. I'm a full supporter at that level. This event has already taken place. It directly relates to COVID-19 recovery for the festival that just occurred. My very dear friend is the president of this organization, but I would not move it forward in terms of other priorities at this time. I would go along with not moving that one forward. Uh, it, uh, the event is over with. Comment. They do have they do have it annually, so I'm sure they would find a use for the funds. Well, they can apply for the purchase service for next year. Um, Thank you. Yes, that's a modest ask. Uh, Northeast Iowa Community College Entrepreneurial Resource Hub. Uh, I turn to start. Or you can start, Jay. I don't I'll, I'll start. This is you know an area that I work at with uh, with my position at Northeast Iowa Community College and my small business development center grant. So maybe to, to set the stage, we, we have the resources related to physical locations established. Um, so with Creative Adventure Lab, with our new Creative Adventure Lab hub in Dyersville, with one in Cascade and a series of others in the surrounding area outside of our, our county, um, we have some of the, the physical spaces to to host entrepreneurs, co-working, and events. What we're lacking and what this provides is some of the 
professional expertise and actually a person, part of the big part of the budget is a full-time employee to move forward the initiatives related to the program and specifically related to creating um, small amounts of private equity for a better word or angel funding um, for those entrepreneurs to get them launched. And this very small component of the well of it is for uh, underserved and uh, minority representation as well uh, in this space. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big supporter of it. It was kind of the vision that was occurred with Startup Dubuque, if you remember that thing, it's kind of now defunct, but uh, eight years ago, um, there was the designs to have a full-time person and to, to move these initiatives forward. And it just, it, it just never occurred. And so this is an opportunity to, to try to fill that gap. I guess I uh, tend to disagree with you on a little bit. I think we have two creative adventure labs in Dubuque and Dyersville and Cascade, and they do have a person on staff that works with the entrepreneurs to help them get things up and running. Uh, Guess I'm a little confused on it as I think it's just a duplication of services again, and I'm trying to avoid that. And the ask is pretty steep. I would move it forward. Pardon? I would move it forward. Okay. That one will go forward. Next, Smokestack Industries LLC, rehabilitation of Smokestack's property. Facades, life safety systems, and ADA compliance. And I, I can start on this one. Uh, it is a unique property, but it is a privately owned property. Uh, we're going to start giving money to one business or one tavern business to uh, redo their structure. I think there's several other bar owners that would probably be more than happy to take some funds also to rebuild them. That's my personal opinion. I mean, like I said, it is a unique property, but I don't think it's the right place for the ARP funds. I don't think it's the right place for the ARPA funds. I would agree with you, you too, as well. Uh, my other comment would be that, though, I do appreciate what Smokestack and, and other businesses have done in hosting a variety of nonprofits, and they continue to to do that. And so they have a lot of community value, value but uh, it, we just can't directly earmark to a, a private venue um, because there's a, be a long line. Right. Next, uh, travel to Buick. That one was moved forward. That's taken care of. St. Mark. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry again. Off we line. just finished Smokestack. Yeah. St. Mark Youth Enrichment Apples for Students, 60000 In history, they'll look back and go, wow, apples must have been really expensive in 2022. <laughs> And this is an organization I have deep ties to, but for the Apples for Students, they will reach this goal through other private funding. I'm no action on this. I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that. The next St. Mark is just a the tail of their initial request that we funded a purchase of services. So I would deny the heroes the $5,500 just to make sure that moves off the spreadsheet. I, motion to deny. Well, I thought I had a thing where that one was withdrawn, but maybe I was wrong. So do I need a motion, Ed, or not? No. I'll withdraw my motion. No action. Uh, Steeple Square is mobility, food security, and a vibrant future, $500,000. I 
I'd like to move that forward. I'm a supporter of the project as well, so definitely would, would want to move it forward. Um, the dollar amount would probably be the one I would want to discuss, but uh, I'm a supporter of the project. Okay, that'll move forward. I think you turned the page. I turned the page to the green section. Something happened here. I lost where it was. That's why I keep getting lost. Somebody keeps moving the page on me. Was that the last one on that? Oh, okay. Yeah, the high tri state that was withdrawn. I'm sorry. And then we go to the uh, broadband infrastructure uh, investments. City of Bankston, Bankston wastewater system upgrade project, 300,000. You can start on that. I would definitely love to help the small towns out. Um, that one. There's some um, issues with uh, the church being connected to that. Uh, my understanding. Um, not sure how to uh, get around that aspect of it because it would be definitely benefiting the church and I don't believe the federal funds can go to that. Yeah, the city ones are, are, are challenging because as stated before, we have 21 cities in, in the county. Um, one of the pieces that stands out with, with Bankston is they don't have any specific city incorporated property tax. Is, is that, that's my understanding. I see some head nodding. Um, whereas 19 of our other cities do have a, a standing property tax levy to help them with their operations of things they need. Um, I know water and sewer are usually restricted accounts, but uh, there, there definitely would be some overlay there. Um, I'd be interested in matching if they had funds matching. I mean, I think, I think when we get down to Rickardsville, I, I believe in their presentation, they have already have lays, raised their levy or plan to raise if they might already raise their tax levy. So that's, that's a commitment. And so if Bankston has that interest, I'm, I'm interested in, in potentially matching or providing funding on those conditions. Are you thinking that on both of the banks and projects? Lindsay? Yes. Yes. Uh, follow, I have them follow a similar path as Rickardsville, where they have, they have additional income coming in to help support these projects, not solely relying on, on our funding. You no, know, the problem with Bankston is they only have I think seven houses to levy on. Agreed. Now that's uh, the that's the double-edged sword of being an incorporated city. Right. Ian? I don't. I honestly have known about Bankston situation for two years, maybe. I don't. I still don't have a solution. I don't. I don't have a solution. I'm waiting for someone to suggest one. So. I would be interested in a match opportunity. I don't know what we would expect them to do to match. Um, if they unincorporate, I don't think it helps anybody. Yeah. So I just wonder if it would be a possibility to have it broke out to what it would cost for the houses for the septic and what it would cost for the church. And the church would have to pay for their own hookup to it. Well, Which that's what the math gets interesting in is if you take those numbers and divide by the service mm -hmm. accounts or the number of houses, it's pretty steep. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a high per cost right. per, per household. Um, that's, that's the benefit of having more population in your community is that you share those costs. Um, I, I, I'm not, at this moment, I don't feel... I can walk down the path with the city of banks and try to solve their issues. Um, I don't have solutions. Uh, the only offer I would have is if they have funds available to match, 
potentially we could we could do that. I think that would be fair. And whether they come from their tax base or they come from another grant uh, from outside sources, then I'm open. I would move it forward, not intending to necessarily make an award, but to not deny it. And then maybe we can, you know, we've reached out to um, four mounds to talk about how they might, we might do a match. Maybe we, Ed can draft a match letter or something. I mean, I, I don't know how to be helpful there. That they'll have to come up with some kind of funding. We can't fund all of it. So, okay. Is this a request for all of it? I think it is for all of it. Yeah, I said we can't come up with all of them. Right. Uh, next is the uh, city of Rickardsville sewer relocation along Highway 3, $500,000. I'd move this forward so we can see where the funding is when by moving it forward for me, it means I need to see a spreadsheet where we can make a grant and see what funds we have left, right? Because I'm very interested in helping the city. Um, it is a, they have raised taxes. They have done all the things. We have been at meetings where they are applying for, app, for grant funds. Right, they've tripled their sewer rates and their levies and everything trying to come up with the money. So I'd definitely be in favor of moving that forward. Yeah, I think a comment I mentioned earlier still stands. You know, I think they have made changes. They've uh, they've increased their, their tax levy. They've uh, applied to, uh, is it RPA or DMATS? I forget which one, um, maybe RPA, RPA, RPA for, for funding. So they've reached out to other entities to try to solve this and uh, uh, I think potentially we could help them with the, the last component. Next on the agenda is Dubuque Community YMCA YWCA rehabilitation, 112,000 new road leading to the camp. I believe. You're the only nonprofit, I think, somebody can correct me, that asked for more money because their costs went up. They increased their request to us. So they wished us to pay 100% of this. And because their costs, other people have been listening and watching and have cut costs rather dramatically to say, well, this is really our, our bottom dollar, our bottom number. Um, so, um, you know, we can move it forward to see if there's any money left, but it's not a high priority for me. I have. Uh concur it it's not a real high priority uh i know you can probably work it in but i didn't see anywhere in the arp thing where roads were uh covered under those funds but maybe under assisting a nonprofit, i guess you could maybe weasel that in i shouldn't say weasel it in but uh make it fit well, we learned this morning we've got our own road problems. We worry of seven hundred and seventy thousand um, dollars over budget, and we've already pulled one project from our roads budget. Different kind of road, one's owned by a nonprofit, one's owned by the county, but everybody's got increased costs, so it's not a high priority for me. I know they have a lot of traffic there with the zip lining and whatever, but I guess they also have the opportunity to raise. Uh, funds, you know, from the zip lining or whatever. So I, I guess I'm just yeah. And I and I did meet with the director Tony on this. Um, and so they do have operating income, and they do have you know an endowment. Maybe endowment's the wrong word. They do have donors, um, good donors throughout the community that are helping with this nonprofit go. And so I see this as very similar to the other nonprofits that we've we've funded. And so we we. We once again asked, asked, what are your needs? We didn't say, you know, didn't restrict those needs. We said, tell us what you need assistance with to, to, to be more vibrant. So, and I think that ask is modest. So I'm, I'm a supporter of some level um, at this time. Okay, again, move it forward and uh, see where we end on our funding. Makoka River Watershed Management, uh, Makoka River Watershed Management, 
plan implementation and support for forty two thousand seven hundred seventy five dollars. So a three year total of our annual seven thousand one hundred twenty nine dollar fee commitment. So basically, in the past, this has come through purchase of services. So seven thousand one hundred twenty nine dollars annually, and they've asked for that kind of in advance. I think for several years. Five year request. So whether you want to use, um, I, th I think we have a commitment, I do, to being part of this watershed. I think that's an important role, but that's what that number really is, is five years of much smaller request. So whether we feel we can take this out of the federal rescue funds or have it go through purchase of services, I'm pretty sure it's here because we already told them once to go around and do it this way. You know, use this portal. I'm supportive of it. I think, you know, we've had good, uh, a broad support for our, our various water quality issues um, and initiatives that we've done. And so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I was skeptical uh, that uh, Limestone was going to be able to pull off this, but they've done really good work. I've, I've been to some of their meetings. I've seen their volunteers on social media and on the work they've done. Their water testing alone in the Makoka River watershed, I think, is is benefit. So I, I'm a full supporter of 42,000. I think this is a really good organization. Yep. Not a problem. You can move that one forward at full funding, Ed. Do we want to get a resolution on that? The resolution will come next week, right? No. Or in a couple weeks. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Next is the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust, SILT, Working Buffers for Cleaner Water and Resilient Food Program, $570,119. That is revised from $1.661. I think when they were here, when Susan was here, I think she did a great job with the presentation. Uh, you know, I think they had support from our, our watershed group uh, with uh, Eric Schmeckel being right with her at the podium. Um, I think this ties in well to our existing programs. We've invested heavily in our uh, ag programs for, for water quality and, and soil health. And I think this would be a, another level, a little bit different, more smaller local farms. Um, and this was, a, this was an application that was revised downward I think maybe just understanding that there's many applicants. Um, so I think this would be a great benefit and it'd be another good resource to be right with, um, you know, Eric and Zach uh, when they're out there talking to, to local farmers related to this program. And it's been proven around the state. High priority for me, I would move forward. Okay, we will move that forward. Uh, Obviously, the funding will be determined at a later date once we get to some kind of a level that we have left. Well, unless we rise, we've done is at the full amount now. I'm, I'm comfortable with the full amount now. I don't know that I can afford the full amount right okay. now. I Good think enough. there are other things that are going to come but forward I'm... with regard to libraries and such. So I need to see. I would like to see some passage of time right. to see what we have to spend. Okay, that takes care of uh, that discussion. Thank you, colleagues, for moving through that rather quickly. Is there only one that's coming forward as a resolution then for the $42,000? That's what I have. Okay, just wanted yeah. to confirm. That's what I understood too. Okay, next we have a work session with the Human Resource Administrator regarding collective bargaining, closed session. Uh, be in compliance with Iowa Code Section 21.4. I know that's the wrong part. Both session for the purpose of discuss, discussing strategy for upcoming labor negotiations with the county's organized employees pursuant to Iowa Code Section 20.17, parentheses. Motion to recess for five minutes. I will second that. A motion and a second to recess for five minutes. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Aye.
Chair, do you want to acknowledge that we will be exiting Zoom at this point and just recording through the room as we go into closed session? So this will be the end of the Zoom as well. We will be going into closed session as we come back from the recess. So Zoom will be shut down.